Fuck you, motherfucker. And a star. Yo soy el meyembe. You ain't shit. You ain't even a fucking pig no more. Do you think that makes me less dangerous or more dangerous? goodness my goodness uh, good morning good afternoon good evening wherever this video finds you welcome to embrace villainy what's going on spring mosh the link is in the description box it is an open forum today but me and mosh need to have a discussion we need to have a discussion come on in here bro because currently what's been going on is that we have been on Charles's podcast talking to a woman who 35 year olds with four kids. Oh, I you, you feel I, like you get your props as a mogul? I don't man. care. Hold on. I guess by the same kids. I mean, the same kid by the same father. Supposedly. We empower your supposedly and i guess she think that you know everything is going to be all right as she has four children between the ages of six and ten in a one-bedroom apartment in a society that is most definitely headed towards war along with an influx of migrants you already have the police departments who are kissing the asses of criminals handling with kid gloves because states and cities cannot afford the lawsuits but somehow you're i'm supposed to think that with a new president coming on which is 100 going to be republican during what looks to be a wartime effort because i'll be damned if they let joe biden be president during a wartime effort I mean, sure, you might be able to have some type of control, but he's going to eventually pass away or be too incompetent to be president. And then you're stuck with who exactly? Kamala? Are you kidding me? You're putting the country in danger. You're putting the country in danger. But yet we have one woman telling another woman who has four children between the ages of six and 10 living in a one bedroom apartment that, you know, she just needs to manifest some hickory who that's going to help her as a single mother become something. Don't know what that something is. Don't know how she's going to be able to survive it in a country that appears to be tightening their belts when it comes to handouts, welfare, and social benefits, tightening their belts. But you know, don't sit up here and be a pick me to some simp that you'll cook for, give him sloppy toppy before bed, before he got get out of bed in the morning, you know, shut your fucking mouth. You know, stop arguing with him. Watch the programs he likes. Just sit there and be docile. But when it comes to your kids, you discipline the kids. Like I said, hey, look, first, you don't introduce them to your kids for a while. And you may have a lot of men that may bounce bounce up and down on you in between that time until you pussy whip and stuff the belly of a man who will be like, okay, I'll take the chance. I'll risk it. But you do the disciplining. You give them kids the fucking whooping. Stop making excuses for your bastard kids doing doing dumb shit. That's the biggest problem in black society is that black people protect criminality. Even in their own household. Stop doing that shit. What's going on, uh, <laughs> Dave Tao? What's up, Simeon? 
yeah i was going in earlier because i'm tired i'm tired of, of black people being so goddamn stupid what's going on uh all <laughs> a u h d you don't have to help me say your name <laughs> but yeah i'm tired of this shit. we're in dire straits right now they didn't bring the the migrants in here you know just to be cheap labor they brought them here to replace your ass the government get austin okay austin okay okay you want to jump in and you okay cool all right ma because i need to get this out of the way <laughs> don't black people don't understand geopolitical agenda they don't even understand what the fuck is going on with them right now they don't see the writing on the wall they really i mean you still got pro black niggas thinking that the gov they gonna give us reparations nigga yeah they gonna give you your reparations all right in the form of concentration camps coming soon to a city near you the biden administration gave black women and the, the the lgbtq the alphabet academy extremists they gave them power and what did they do they they tried to groom the children into being sexual deviants and black women instead of helping out their children helping out their neighborhoods and all this shit, instead what you got is a bunch of tiffany in yours and and their children the bastard children of single mothers out here being roving gangs of thieves 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 white people do it too i don't give a fuck about what white people are doing i'm concerned about us fuck them niggas let them niggas do what the fuck they do to each other i'm concerned about us they're cutting your hand offs off have you not figured out that they're cutting off your goddamn handouts Affirmative action was the bell cow to let you know they're done with your black ass. Now they got mandatory DNA testing, get ready to pass in Tennessee, fraternity fraud. You have to understand what they're going to do. They're going to hold you accountable for your, your children. They're getting ready to cut your food stamps off. They're getting ready to cut your daycare off. They're getting ready to cut your welfare checks off. They're really seriously getting ready to only make it for um, el the elderly and the disabled, be it mental or physical. You being a 400 pound fat ass sitting on your ass eating Cheetos is not a disability anymore. You being for a, a mother of four in a one goddamn bedroom apartment is not a disability. You better go for here. Mandatory DNA testing. You better find out who your baby daddy is and take his ass to child, to child support court. We're going to cut off the spigot. We can't afford it. We're getting ready to go to war, bitch. China ain't giving us a fucking penny. Who's the money coming from? Huh? The federal government? We all know the federal government won't take goddamn money. That's why we sit up here and Biden won't how much for, for Ukraine? 450 billion. You do understand the federal government, which is really the oligarchs that own this country, they want their money back with interest. yeah we forget that did we forget that did we we forget that they want their money back when they loan the the government when the federal government loans the united states government money they want their money back with interest so they make cuts they make cuts to social security they raise taxes they make cuts to social programs <laughs> yeah what'd you say they yeah dollar the dollar general the dollar going down the drain dollar general is going down the drain yeah the housing market is crap 
jobs are leaving his job is laying off people they're closing businesses walmart's mcdonald's walgreens and cvs's and you know all them little restaurants all these stores are going out of business because of crime millionaires are buying land in fucking maui they're building bunkers and shit they're fleeing california but you know everything's gonna be just fine just fine just continue to practice the ostrich defense by sticking your head in the fucking sand and acting like acting like nothing's going to happen to you yeah you say black women are the only group that talking about we don't need their men you don't need us hold on let me show this let me put this up here let me play this because now there's this thing called the 4b movement listen to this shit. isn't that so funny how they went from telling us we're going to be single lonely cat ladies to then turning around and being like wait y'all don't want us we're going to snatch you off the street and force you to be with us masculinity is a mental illness okay first and foremost i don't know where the fuck she got that silly shit from i have yet to hear not one man say oh, you black bitch we're gonna snatch you off the street and force you to be with us on some ariel castro shit i mean women say the dumbest things they say the dumbest things and, and then wonder why nobody listens to them shout out to passport og brother i don't make no money on this channel if you get a copyright uh suggestion okay <laughs> i talk about passport bros but really I, I mainly focus on expatting so matter of fact i'm not subscribed here let me do the subscribe i'm subscribed to you on my bitter truth show channel but i'm subscribed to you now here so but i saw this earlier today so let's play it so the 4b movement has uh TikTok, taken TikTok by storm and so many people are talking about it it's not to teach them a lesson it's because we have learned ours and so let me address this comment the idea that it's a punishment to men when i don't believe that it is i believe that it's a very smart assessment so true nobody runs from a good man reply good men are well taken care of that's why they stay so quiet they're happy and unfortunately there's a ring of truth to that but normally good men they are with good women you have a chick on here on social media from TikTok who talked about this boyfriend that she had he was perfect perfect but he wasn't the one which is fine she did him a favor because she didn't recognize a good I mean I guess he didn't make her coochie wet because in all honesty let's be honest our women or black women have been trained since the 70s to find the pookiest most ray rayiest nigga they can find to reproduce with we were on charles's panel today arguing with somebody who did just that mother of four 35 one bedroom apartment kids between the ages of six and ten daddy nowhere to be found claimed that she didn't she realized that he wasn't husband and father material before she even cracked her legs open to him but she had four of his children or three or whatever she had one claimed that he would slip the condom off and still go at her raw are you hearing me good men are out there but normally they're teamed up with good women normally they find good women good women know a good man when they see one prostitutes see good men as simps do you understand me prostitutes 
see good men as simps. That's why old dude made a, 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 a comedy rebuttal video saying that same girl's talking points. Yeah, you know, I'm in my soft man era, soft boy era. Yeah, she need to pay the bills. I need to relax in luxury. Yeah, she just wasn't the one for me, even though she paid all the bills. Yeah, he was mocking her. And she she was so hurt by that, she had to block him. She made a whole video talking about him. Or oh, you say, no offense. Oh, Dave Tao. No offense, but a lot of black women like criminal type black men and good black men not get appreciated. The good black women be wiped up. Yeah, exactly. exactly exactly they overlook they think good black men are the lames and the simps and whatnot and i mean there are some simps that are good black men to women because they'll put the woman before themselves that's really the definition of a simp a man who will put a woman before his his his, his own self-interest that's really the definition of a simp there are simps out there they they've been raised by single mothers they are who men who recognize their own self-interest they call them blue pill they call them simps whatever single mothers are or they do very well with those type of men they're still out there but the thing is is that you as a woman you have to take care of a simp or else you'll see him up there slapping chris rock on stage what's up detroit you don't want to you don't want to cross a simp because when a, when a simp finds his nuts uh, uh, he be reverts to the toxic male that you call yourself trying to avoid he'll beat the shit out your ass you'll find yourself in a barrel somewhere being buried alive depending on culture you understand she went for a jog <laughs> or like the anesth uh, the anesthesiologist Today is the day the guy that killed his his, his ex-wife and, and his pregnant girlfriend. Yeah, that that's you know, when the simp finds his nuts, blood flows. There are plenty of news stories about simps who found their nuts in a relationship or a pooky nigga who was done playing the role of a simp so now your child is murdered or you're murdered your son your 11 year old son gets stabbed to death trying to protect you because you thought this pooky nigga who were the biggest simps in the world because he made your your panties moist in the middle you thought that he was a good match for you you say 4B movement is a small group in South Korea, yet black women are celebrating it like it's majority of them. Hold on. You know what? Let's really get into this. I'm, we're going to play this video because I'm going to show you just how stupid these chicks are because they don't seem to understand. This, this is what happens when you have a baseline uh, surface dirt in uh, intellect and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So let, let's play it. And it is about being active instead of being reactive to a lot of the concerns that women have consistently had. It's self-preservation and protecting your mental health, 100. And we've reached a point where we have to make a decision based on safety. Look at this crime rate. Look at this crime rate. I want you to understand that this was around, see how it, it, it was at its lowest? Right after it was at its lowest, I would say maybe let's say this 2018, 2019, okay? This is when that whole George Floyd shit happened and Black Lives Matter was at its highest because of uh, uh, Michael Brown. But then after that, when Biden came into office and they decided to defund the police, 
and uh decriminalized theft under a thousand dollars look how far it, sh it shot up look how far it shot up look at this shit look at this shit This is what BLM and, and the Democratic Party have done. It skyrocketed. Skyrocketed. I mean, we're almost getting close to crack epidemic levels because this is around the time the, the crime bill was in effect. See how crime dropped during the crime bill years? Then we had a brief spike who was president around this time and then it dropped continually dropped it rose a bit who was president in 2015 obama and then it dropped again and then it spiked back up based on emotional well-being and based on mental health. And the reality of it is, is that ain't nobody ever ran from a good man. Never. I'm just going to call it like a team. That's bullshit. Again, you got a guy mocking a chick who ran from a quote unquote good man based on her um, description of him. He paid all the bills. He brought me flowers. He rubbed my feet. He ate my taco while I ate ice cream and on, on Saturday night. He sucked my pinky toes, but he just wasn't the one. Is is that ain't nobody ever ran from a good man? Never. I'm just gonna call it like a ti is. All the while, my husband done found somebody else building a a relationship and building a life with them. I should have stayed married to my husband. A good man don't have no problems, honey. Getting that big piece of chicken. I divorced my husband because I was making a certain amount of money. I divorced my husband because I thought I didn't need him anymore. I divorced my husband because I had this senior position at work and thought I held the same position at home. I divorced my husband because I thought I was better than him because I had my degree now. I divorced my husband because I thought a successful marriage meant I was here and he was down here. Ain't nobody running from no good man. That's never going to happen. Although conversation continues in 2024 as to the existence of a pay gap or not between men and women, New research shows that the gap has narrowed substantially in the last 40 years when it comes to medium hourly earnings. And in an atmosphere where for two decades plus, women have consistently gotten more bachelor degrees than men, a simple question can be asked. But really the simple question can be asked, a bachelor degree in what? Because we know that the public school system educates uh, people of all races, public school, educates people of all races to learn how to read write and count at an eighth grade level if you're smart enough to advance beyond that cool but understand this shit right up in here okay because if you go by this is 82 this is around the time that they started giving scholarships to black women in high school who had at least a c average so you know Basic bitches, if that's what you want to call them, were getting college scholarships to these, uh, you know, HBCUs and whatnot. Meanwhile, this is also around the same time that affirmative action took place. And if you notice, because they were giving all of those scholarships out, black women caught up with black men on the scholastic level. What's up, Mosh? They called up with black men on the scholastic level. And it was around 2002. And if you notice, know black men is still on a steady pace, but black women started growing exponentially because though they still gave them those scholarships. But now here in 2024, as you can see, they leveled out around 2020. Now that they've done away with affirmative action, because there's way too many Keisha's, shout out to uh, AC, 
Way too many Keishas are coming into these PWIs and they were done with that shit. You're causing too much disruption. All right. In white institutions. Me and Mosh was talking about this earlier. I told them flat out, these are this is white people shit. They can do whatever the fuck they want to do with it. What how are you gonna punish them? You gonna stand outside. I mean, I'm, I'm adding on to it, uh, obviously, bro. But you're gonna stand outside of Harvard with a sign. They did away with legacy emissions. All right. So now you gotta earn your way in. And the biggest people who are complaining about um the death of affirmative actions are the Asians. Because they like, yo, in all honesty, they need to kick the Asians out of their institutional um 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 uh departments. They need to kick them out because of what's going on geopolitical on the geopolitical stage with the east with china russia singapore all of this stuff taiwan they got to get rid of these motherfuckers they need to restore uh white power They gave black women power. They gave them this bullshit education where they get master degrees in psychology and underwater basket weaving and shit. All right. They done fucked it up. I mean, look at it. Seriously, look across this country. Look at the political structure. You have all sorts of black women in power and all of the, almost all of them are fucking up. Karen Fox. I mean, of course, Tiffany Henyard. She's the biggest one. Uh, the chick out in, in uh, Alameda County, their DA. All right. You had the Indian chick in Minnesota who was uh, pro uh, defund the police until she got carjacked by four black boys who beat the shit out of her, broke her leg and bust her head open in front of her children. And stole her pink fucking Jeep. Suddenly now she's the biggest, you know, fuck that, throw them niggas in jail uh, opponent in Minnesota. It's always funny uh, when you become the victim of the crime that you, you make excuse for and want to protect. And now suddenly you change your position. Pamela Price, that's her name out in Alameda County. What's up, Lewis? What's up? I'll post the link again in case y'all missed it. <sighs> What'd you say? The same group of women are quiet about Mercedes Moore getting by Zaddy in Dallas, Texas, when they never came out the woodwork going against Zaddy. I need to look that up. I don't know about this Mercedes Moore uh, thing. I'll Google it, but let's finish this. I'm sorry. I'm going on rants and tangents. Because being on Charles's program for an hour, that that chick listening to another chick tell her she got to manifest some type of fucking money, some type of way. But that has no, she had no plan for this chick. I told this chick, look, you need to find you a simp that, that finds you attractive. You're going to run through a lot of them. Don't put your emotions in it. But you need to cook for these dudes at their place. You need to sloppy toppy them. You need to pussy whip them and also get them food whipped too. You got to be a cooking ass bitch and don't let up. Don't introduce them to your kids right away, but, but be honest with these dudes. So that way they know what they're getting into. So they won't resent you because they realize that you lied to them. You got to be honest. You got to pussy whip a simp through not just sex but also through through his belly because the quickest way the fastest way to getting a man to actually care about you is through his belly am i lying and, and, and cooperation and cooperation yeah like, and cooperation cooperation is like key bro Oh, okay. Detroit, you talking about that that the little chick with the BBL that got murdered in her apartment? By yeah, look, look. You know what? I'm not gonna sit here and shame uh black women for trying to date outside their race. But the thing about it is, is we as black men, we have always known that if you fuck with a white chick, 
you are playing uh, racial, not Russian, but racial roulette. Racial roulette. If Johnny Depp was black and you heard what Amber Heard was saying to him, and he's just a white guy. Oh, who you think they're going to believe, Johnny? You think they're going to believe you? You think if you tell them you're going to hit me, you're going to believe I'm a woman. They're going to believe me. Imagine if he was black. Imagine the shit that would come out of, come out of her mouth if he was black. Amber Heard was, gee, quote unquote, pretty white woman. Everybody was believing her. Was they not, Mosh? Were they not believing Amber Heard and Johnny Depp beat me with her little fake makeup, little fake bruises and shit? She shitted in this dude's bed. She tried to blackmail him. Either give me these apartments and this money or I'll tell the world you beat me. And because he didn't, she did. He had to take this bitch to court and he's, his reputation is still trash. At least on the left side. Those who are dumb enough to still believe all women instead of evidence. Imagine if he was black. Yeah, black men and, and Becky's is so passe. They smut them bitches out on OnlyFans and, and in college and they call it a day. They ain't nobody trying to break their necks to marry a Becky. That's why the passport bro movement is so strong. White women are played out. Black women are played out. Motherfuckers are now going. They're not even fucking with the Africans. They, they fuck with the Hispanics and now the Asians. But now you have places like Medellin who are limiting visas and cutting off the uh, the access to sexual, cutting off the sexual access to foreigners, to tourists. Because it's way too much crazy shit going on down there in South America. They're done with that. They're done. South America is starting to shut their fucking doors to passport bros. Not just black men, but to men in general. But you know, this is what happens when you get on the internet and tell the world you have no problem buying pussy. Black women do it too, you dumb nigger. You dumb nigger. How <laughs> dare you be that fucking dumb to tell the world you buy pussy? Now look, Austin Hollerman can't go back to Brazil. He's been exposed to being a trick ass nigga. If you ever seen Travel Time by Paul, I'm calling it. Watch Travel Time by Paul. He fucking called austin hollerman out and he used to talk to austin hollerman all the time that was his ace boom this nigga got other people busting him out for being a goddamn traveling trick they literally spoke about how men passport bros not just black men but men in general sit up here and talk about how where to go and and buy sex they talk about the bar girls and how much you got a white guy that's got a whole fucking whiteboard with a tutorial on if she says this then you say that and everything i mean come on you're fucking it up y'all making the block hot because you trying to match bitches Use the bitches are degenerate, and I and I mean that I'm not talking about women. I'm talking about bitches, degenerate bitches overseas, breaking out glass windows with skateboards and shit, getting locked up in fucking foreign foreign prisons because they can't control them. Got their got themselves. You trying to match them? You are truly the son of a single mother. Because none of this shit was ever broadcasted or brought to light until after COVID when y'all niggas start running your fucking mouths about traveling abroad. You brought locker room talk to the internet. Now the block is hot. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. 
Mosh, am I lying? No, here. Am I lying though? Not in the slightest. I told you they was dumb as hell from the beginning. I told you. I was even that shit even had me looking at you sideways, like, what's bro on to, man? Huh? Yeah, but I had to explain to you. For me, it's not about women, it's about what it's really meant to be. It's about expatting, getting out of this fucking country that's overpriced. I mean, come on. You live in a country that charges you for water. <laughs> Man. You're taxed on everything. I, matter of fact, I really do need to go into the video about the Africans that have moved here to the United States and they wish they had. And they say, God damn, it's like back home, we could buy a house and pay the land tax once, maybe five years later, they come looking for it. Maybe it's $200. That ain't shit in their money. $200 in their money. They like shit. Car note, insurance, tax on food, tax on everything. They say, God damn, well, we want to go back. And then they can grow their own shit too. That's the crazy thing about over there. Yeah, Austin Holloman almost got his ass kicked on because he one of them in real life streaming things. He almost got his ass kicked. Nah, he got more. Um, he almost got man. He was in Brazil. Dude almost got done up, bro. That he was no. I mean, see? overseas where he is now. He almost oh, got man. beat down. Where is he at now? He over in I think Thailand or something. In one of them Asian countries. He almost oh. got his shit kicked in on on live stream. Oh shit. Because you can't be walking that. around there streaming everything live because you walk understand he hang around in the trick sector. Yeah. You know, he looking for prostitutes to, to make his girlfriend and shit. You yeah. know. And you know what? I'm gonna know, tell you he, something. He a young guy with money. Hold on. But the oh, thing bad, is, them dudes, them people do not want their business broadcasted for the internet to see. So they almost right. kick this shit in. Right. What's up, Man, David Jabba? I remember one time that almost happened to Dame Dash. He wasn't on that type of time. He got jumped on, like him and his crew, you know, they was up there just filming regular stuff. You know, he was just traveling over in Paris and they just happened to walk in the section where the pimps were. And they mm -hmm. thought they was filming them and they got jumped on because of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had to fight themselves yeah. out of that situation. And that was just like some happenstance stuff. They weren't trying to be on no, trying to, you know, be on that. But yeah, that you can't just go in no foreign country thinking like that's the problem i will say that's one problem with americans you think you can go we think a lot of times we can just go anywhere and american rules apply everywhere no you got to go over there the, with respect yeah in one of the videos in my free section of patreon i showed the guy johnny somali he got his ass kicked over there in israel fucking around mm. live streaming and causing problems because he thought he was still in japan where he could do that and get away with it Right. And now recently his, his cameraman is trying to be a, a an IRL and he over in Taiwan or Thailand and he almost got his ass kicked. Mm. I pay money. I pay money. And they said it ain't about the money. It's about the respect. Right. right. Let me get back to this. I'm sorry. I mean, let's finish this and we'll get into what me and you supposed to really oh, be. Talking I got about. something. No, no, I got something about, about the new the Western 4B movement. Go ahead. Now that lady you just showed, the one with the glasses, the one who was talking that shit. She had the same exact video a long time ago. She made a video about a dude uh -huh. she was seeing. She was engaged to the guy. And it's funny that she's saying that's like nobody ever leaves a good man. Apparently she did, or she dude kept saying, Hey, she kept she kept pressuring dude to get married. And he said, No, I'm not ready to. And she was like, Well, if not, I'm gonna leave, I'm leaving, I'm moving to Vegas. She said she had no plans for real, no job there, nothing. But she just tried to gave this dude this ultimatum. He was like, oh, he helped her move out, move her, move her shit out and everything. It's like, you don't hit no man with no ultimatum. No real man with no ultimatum. And then he said, oh, okay, you want to go? Oh, there's the dough. You know <laughs> and, 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 and it just fucked her up. Like He was so crass about it. I'm like, you don't do that to no man. Not none of these suckers, but a man's man is not going to accept no ultimatums like that. You know what it was? He uh, uh, A guy who was used to, used to women okay a guy who is used to de dealing with women mm -hmm. because a lot of simps are not yeah a lot of simps are not yeah but a guy who is used to dealing with women he can see through your bullshit from day one mm -hmm. because you're doing you're going 10 percent above uh above and beyond the average chick would 
So right. now he's sitting up here looking at you like, what the fuck is you up to? What is your end goal? Oh, really? You moving cross country with me? You moving out of the country with me? Oh, okay. Ain't no ring on your finger, and you and you doing this? Okay. What do you? Well, she, really well, he was doing. He, well, she well she gave that ultimatum as like, okay, I'm gonna move if you don't marry me. She tried to leverage that. Oh, if you don't marry me, I'm gonna move. Whatever. Or I'm moving. Bye. And, and it, exactly, uh -huh. that's exactly his reaction. He was like, okay. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, he he went up and got her stuff and helped her move her stuff out out to the car and everything. And she was like, oh shit, this motherfucker serious. I did that with the last woman that lived with me. I packed her shit up in the dead of night. Mm. And after ten o'clock at night, I packed her fucking car. Mm. You know, because you what it is, you don't try. Here's the thing. And women really think that men are stupid. I mean, we'll play, we'll go along with your little game because we getting our dick sucked and all that shit. Maybe we getting food, you know, whatever. We getting somebody, you know, to cuddle up with, you know, because I mean, we're men, we're we're human beings. We don't want to be lonely. Okay. But mm -hmm. we have a breaking point. Right. You know, and eventually, because we we're hip to your game, you already tip if you're smart enough. To know what the fuck a woman is up to, you mm -hmm. already know what her what her what her end game is. Just like Travis Kelsey with the black with the black chick, he knew what she, well, she was after the money. He knew that it didn't matter that she paid her way to go here and go there like she was on some Fonny Willis shit. You know, no, he already knew what this bitch was up to. Right, you know what I'm saying? She wanted she wanted to be. You know, a quote unquote basketball wife or you know, housewives of, of, of Kansas City or some shit like that. He already knew because she was a she was a she's an Instagram whore. She's an attention whore. She may not be selling pussy, but she's selling her, uh, attention. She's an attention mm -hmm. whore. He already knew that. Mm -hmm. That's why he never put a ring on it. That's why he told her, hey, look, but if you for real, then you know I, I, I shouldn't have to pay for anything with you. Okay. So she relied on simps and, mm -hmm. and, and bullshit brand deals because of who she was fucking to right. pay pay her bills. But now mm -hmm. that the gravy train is over, I guarantee you, do you really I put it to you like this? Do you think Taylor Swift paid for her steak dinner with him? I highly doubt that. Do you think she paid for her mocha latte when they went out together? Nah. When they went on the trip, do you think she cash tapped him or zelled her half? Nah. I can almost guarantee no. Do you think her credit card uh, got wiped off one time? Nah. Since she and Travis Kelsey been and, together, and she got way more than him. <laughs> he say so. Kelsey became a cuck for Swift. No, Travis Kelsey realized that he's with a woman that actually has some type of of value, who's not trying to use him for him because she got more than him. So she ain't in it for the money. She in it for the beefcake. And the publicity she don't need him in order to boost her fame and he don't need her in order to boost his fame he was already famous she was already famous it's just like the black chicks talking about um simone biles and and uh, xavier howard man come on simone biles is old news mm -hmm. she old news she won her trophy she's done Xavier Howard is still in the midst of his career. His her name may be bigger, but her star is diminishing. His is at its peak. They're going to be on the same playing field. But they them two, Simone Biles wanted a husband. Do you understand? She wanted a husband. She found her a guy that had the pookie look. But he, but he didn't have the pookie mentality. You can tell by how he talk. He, he sounds very educated. All right. Uh, as far as from the average brother, I would say he's a little more educated than the average brother. If you've ever heard him talk, if mm -hmm. you've ever 
interact because there's videos of her at Packers practice and them talking and everything. You know, they got the Zoom mic and the Zoom camera. They're not even looking. They're not even trying to style and profile. And you can hear the lovey-dovey-ness in, in both of their voices towards each other. Baby, did you see me when I did this? And she's like, yeah, you know, in all honesty, if you'd have done this and that, you probably would have done this and that. He was like, you know what? Damn, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? They sharing information together and shit. They're talking with love. That's not a relationship based on money or fame or privilege. That's because, hey, look, you know what? Shit, I'm digging you. I'm digging you. Am I making sense here? 100%. You say you get Trust me, you know I know. But he's still a cuck. Look, he may be a cuck, but he he fucking the most famous white bitch in, in, in the world right now. But you gotta he got to remember. Her, he got her taking pearl necklaces, okay? So, I mean, if you're going to cuck. <laughs> uh, but oh, you don't, would you cuck with Beyonce? You know, I'm going to tell you like this. I don't mean to be I'm going to tell you this. She got, you got to remember, she got a reputation for messing with dudes already in the industry. She, and she, already, and right after she deal with them, she makes music about them. Mm -hmm. This is what I heard. I've never listened to not no, one no, song. No, no, it's true. She does that. She does <laughs> yeah, that's that. what I heard. So, so, so it's like, my thing is, this is about her trying to, you know, doing something else high profile. And you see what happened with the NFL and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? With them, that whole thing. So, Come on, man. That, well, that, this stock, is play. Whose stock value was boosted? Whose stock value was Honestly, value both of them. Boosted? Actually, both of them have profited from it. The NFL okay. collectively, so which is, I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to work so for all sides. All sides. And I don't knock them. It's, it is what it is. Do I care? No. You know, so yeah, you know how I am. What's the problem? Nothing. I'm not saying nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, hey, go ahead, get, do what you got to do. I'm not knocking it. it. I'm, I'm just pointing out the play. Would you cut for, for Beyonce? I ain't cooking for nobody, bro. I, I got too much pride. You ain't cooking. You ain't cooking for nobody. I'm not. You ain't cooking no, for nobody. I, I, you know. Uh, okay. You know what, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you a question. So let's say, okay. I mean, because you're married now. You re, you're married. Yeah. Let's say that that was Beyonce who slid you the blinky. Okay. You you're saying cooking. Cooking is something very specific. Cucking very, is where you 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 pretty much you do not all this red pill hardcore you know cooking clean and all that bullshit you set that aside for for that chick. I mean, I'm, I guess you could say I'm doing that oh, shit now. That, that's what a cuck is. I mean, I always thought a cuck <laughs> was specifically a motherfucker who out there just you know watching a chick get banged by another dude. That's like sip shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I look at a cuck as. No, I not a sexual cuck, but a relationship type a cuck where you you I put it to you like this: you either you either realize that a relationship is give and take, or you're hardcore one way. Oh, uh, you say you you see it's give or take. I'm more give or take anyway, so that's just what I am. But oh, okay. are you saying like a statement or something like that? Like that type of that type of situation? No, I mean it's like you, like I said, you, you got to cook and clean, and you know, and, and, and oh, that's I it. My, my thing is yeah, that's, that's that, just, yeah. my, my thing is that's just a balance. That's like a balance, man. It's like my thing is if you're providing or if you handle this shit, then hey, fuck it, I'll take it back. But see, you, take away the you balance. aren't even handing me. So, that, that's how, I don't look at that balance. as cooking. That's just that, that's like. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. The uh, Tabitha chick, the lady with the afro, the, the southern lady who did the cooking show, her. Uh -huh. Like her husband was a cop for like 15 years. She wouldn't help me say, like, look, since you sacrificed for me, I'm gonna sit you down. You retired. And you know what? She he took a back seat and she's handling shit now. Now that's not I want you to understand. A lot of dudes would say, Oh, he a cook. Even though no. he ain't, but a yeah. lot of dudes would say he a cook. No. Nah. No, no. You know what she did? She says, "No, you sacrifice for me. I'm going to reinvest in you." That's what that is. If, first of all, a lot of dudes don't understand. If your woman don't invest in you, you ain't got no real woman, bro. Your woman ain't there for you. She ain't willing to invest in you in any kind of way. I'm not just talking about monetarily, but just whatever she, whatever she has. Y'all got to invest in each other. That's the first thing. And you know, you know how I feel about that shit. Because the one thing is, if you have no skin in the game, that motherfucker was, will get up and leave and walk walk. They ass away from you in the heartbeat and don't have because they right. don't have no skin in the game. So my thing right. is, yeah, you better invest in me because I'm going to invest in you too. So okay, so you would cuck for Beyonce? I guess, yeah. Well, and, that, and you're putting it. I just don't like that word. You know, you because that I word is very. 
I mean, I'm that word is very specific to me. But you know, if you but, want to put it in that terms, I guess you could say yeah. In that, in okay. That. Okay. All right. So, in other words, you would enter your soft boy era for behind. Man, look. She, man, hey, she look. wouldn't have to worry about paying for her steak dinner, right? Man, look, bro. <laughs> man, fuck that. Man, look. Hey, look. Hey, bro. I, you know, I was. Hey, bro. I'm, I'm gonna say this, and I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with myself. You know what happened? You know, saying when I. Uh, you know, I had to step down from my position, my old job a while back. You know, I got sat down yeah. for about two months. Hey, I'm gonna just say this. Hey, I was out of work for about two months. This house was never dirty. This house was clean in the motherfucker. Everything was cooked. All that shit was taken care of. That's just what it is. My thing is, I was down for out of commission for a second. I had to step up another. <laughs> I wasn't about to be sitting around this house. You're not gonna. That shit just. And you know what? I was never disrespected not once. Nigga, ain't nobody carrying no goddamn girlfriends chihuahua, especially in no tiny fucking purse. So right. yeah, that's that's too much. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. that's huh? when you you watching your girlfriend get railed by a black guy while you in the closet yeah. wearing a Superman costume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, that that's some weird, sneako bro. cut right there. We ain't going that far. Yeah, we yeah. ain't going that far. <laughs> we put yeah. some limits on the cuckery. <laughs> yeah, man, look, look. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, like if you go pull some stabman shit, pull some stabman shit, bro. That dude was just getting papered up, bro. And and, and he, that dude came in. That, that dude came in with his own money anyway. Did we ever see Stedman and Oprah together outside of you know people no. just questioning her sexuality? No, no. And, but he played his position. He played his yeah, position. Dude, dude was never broke in the first place. He already came in the situation. <laughs> he already had money of his own. He just didn't have Oprah money. So my thing is, it's a, it's a difference. My thing is this: a lot of these dudes, like uh, Kiki Palmer's dude, how did he come in the situation? Dude seemed like he was like a little broke, like like a sucker. Like if you come in with your own, you can hold your own. It's a difference being able to. She just may have more of it. Okay, my thing is, you ain't losing shit. You might just be losing some of that status, but my thing is this: it's cool as long as you can hold your own. Yeah, that situation. Situation. Look, I mean, to put it to bed. You know, now that we have revisionist history, but I, I knew it exactly what it was. What it was, she wanted a, a, a baby by a light skinned dude. Yep. Yep. I figured you know, that as well. And she got the baby. She tried to tried to make it work, but you know, she was too much of, of Kiki. You already mm -hmm. I already knew what was up with Kiki when she was out at the um uh damn I forget, the Michael Brown uh protest out in Ferguson. And the little uh, dusty, musty, crusty, rusty pookies pulled up her her little skirt that she had that was above her knees. They they lifted it up. And she turned around, looked at them, and smiled. Right. And kept walking. Already knew what was up with Kiki right then and there. So yeah. that whole little domestic violence situation, nobody mm -hmm. asked the question of, "Hey, look, the dude came by to pick his son up at three o'clock. The kid wasn't there." why wasn't the kid there mm -hmm. and then she agitated the situation and the shit got physical because she that's what she wanted to happen mm -hmm. she wanted them chicks she's a keisha she ain't mm -hmm. nothing but a fucking keisha oh keisha yeah and now this dude sitting up here he got all this bad press because this bitch was uh alienating him from his child mm -hmm. nobody talks about that though yeah because his usefulness was up and the domestic violence shit which was uh she made public that was to push him further away mm -hmm. so that way she could be a single mom now you're single mom now you're a single mom said you had this kid <laughs> oh my god yeah all of that was that, that's what chicks do that's what keisha's do that's what a uh, shout out to AC. That's what Keisha's do, and that's exactly what happened in that situation. And that's what that, that's what happened in the situation that we were talking about on Charles's program. Mm -hmm. This bitch got all the kids she wanted. As she said, she knew after the first kid, really before the first kid, that he was not husband and father the material. But she hurried up and had him give her four kids real quick, and then quickly got rid of him and thought that you know because like that feminist preach. You can do this on your own. White Zaddy, the government, is going to take care of you. She's four kids in a, in a one-bedroom apartment. 
and you got some goofy bitch on Charles's program telling her to manifest. I don't know. Some type of way to figure it out. Right. In a country that's getting she was ready to, her to hook up with four men and all that. Huh? She was telling her to hook up with the four men and all that other dumb shit, bruh. Right. Like, girl, you better find you an older man that's at least 10 years older, you know, some type of sugar daddy dude that you can, you know, somehow suck, fuck, and feed your way into his life. Because shit's about to get real goddamn fucking tight. You the last bitch that need to be in talking about some, you know, I ain't going 50-50 with no fucking man. When you are, the black women are the most evicted in this country. Most agreed and most evicted. And the highest debt, student loan debt. Yes, and the most in debt. The fuck out of here. Us is, and then now this shit right here. Let me get back to this. I'm sorry. I want to finish this. Let me, I want to finish this. I'm sorry. I want to finish this because this shit just baffles me more bachelor degrees than men a simple question can be asked about the new western 4b movement is the source of complaints that modern women are fulfilling the role of traditional women in their relationships and not feeling appreciated for it or might there be some other reason for the complaints and the rise of the quote-unquote western 4b movement i'm gonna say this real quick this whole cooking and cleaning shit the reason why and i and Y'all can clip this. I want women to understand. When men ask, can you cook and clean? They don't mean for them. They mean, hey, if we have children, will you be a good wife and mother, but mainly a, a mother to our children? Are, are we feeding our children junk food every night? Are you just going to leave dirty pampers and their toys and all this stuff all over the floor are we coming home to a messy house i have no problems helping you cook i have no problems helping you clean we both live here but if you are a messy bitch what good are you to me because all of us for the most part at least we should be living on our own as capable adults right yeah exactly okay did you keep your place clean Man, I told you, you already know my story, bro. You already did know you what cook, Did you cook for yourself or were you a fast or, or are you Man, a fast bro, food junkie? Bro, I'm cooking right now. Yeah, I've so, seen the pictures. You sent me all these steaks and potatoes and shit. Man, and, hey, bro, yeah, I'm just like cooking, me. bro. I just hey. like cooking, bro. In fact, I'm about to send you Dude. what I'm making right now. I'm about to text you right now, bro. That's fine. Shit, go yeah. ahead and make me jealous. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on a kick. I'm trying to lose some weight. So, you know, I I've, I've been too. eating my, my Asian food. Yeah, so but, see, the, you know, but, noodles, but you know what? The little that, that's what are awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know what? Off, oh, my bad. You, you, but you, you kept good, your apartment clean, right? You keep your place yeah. clean, right? Yeah, yeah. All the You're time. married. Your wife <laughs> is not home when you get home after five, correct? Uh, well, she'll be here for about two hours. Then, I, then she ships out for work usually. Okay, so if, if whose whose responsibility is it to pick your dirty socks up off the floor? Nah, or whoever, whoever. Whose responsibility what, what? is it to wash oh, that's your mine. dirty socks? That's mine. Cause I, cause, hey, that's me. Yo, I'm okay. Real I mean, I don't. The, the, let's let's keep it short because I, I want to move forward. Okay. So you pick up behind yourself, right? Like a, like a grown ass man, yeah. And y'all share the cooking a... responsibilities, right? Absolutely. Okay. That's what a relationship is all about. So when a yeah. man asks a woman, what do you bring to the table? Do you know how to cook and clean? Because unfortunately, a lot of bitches out here, they mamas never taught them how to be clean nah, and nah, how nah, to nah. take care of themselves. I mean, they can't even, they don't even know how to do their real hair, which is why they buy all these weaves and shit. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how to take care of their skin, which is why they put on all these tons of fucking makeup. Mm -hmm. You understand? These people are trifling. You see 20-year-old girls with fucking aprons and shit and guts and everything looking a sloppy fucking mess. When you should, that's the year, those are your prime attractive dating years. You should be in shape.
You should be hot to trot. You should have motherfuckers. I'm in a, I'm, you should have Nate pulling up. That's what killed me when women talk, oh, older men. Like, yeah, if you're legal, if you can pull men of all sectors, I mean, whether you entertain them or not, it's up to you. But the thing is, before you move out of your mama's house, you know, or before your 18th birthday, you should know how to run a household efficiently, not just cooking and cleaning, but also how to pay the bills, learning which bills are, are important. Pay, pay the bills, but business, I put it like this, business over bullshit. If you are over 18 years old and you don't understand how to take care of business before your bullshit, before your bullshit, you will be one of those women who are sitting up here uh, trying to bag you, talking about some a six or seven figure man in your cheap little sheen dress with your cum catchers on, on your eyelashes and this fucking bunny ruckus fucking weave. Okay? Thinking you cute. Trying to sell pussy through Instagram. Men don't want that. Not good men. Men who buy whores entertain women like that. Men who buy whores entertain women like that. Women like this on the screen here. Who talk about no breeding with inferiors. Bitch, who are you calling inferior? Who are you calling inferior with this fake hair, this fucking makeup, these fucking lashes? Living on probably a, 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 a subsidized housing. Who the fuck are you calling an inferior? I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. I'm just. Oh, you good. Let's hear what she had to say. Because as you can see, it says over 150 elementary schools have no first graders. This is over in um, North Korea, South Korea. Damn. South Korea, yeah. Because just like the United States, they're going through a pricing situation. The interest rates and everything, housing is out of control. Mm. And, and and this is the beauty. This is what people don't seem to understand. Let me calm myself down. When men cannot afford housing, I'm not talking about an apartment. I'm talking about owning a home because the rates are so high. The prices are so high. There's no fucking way a three bedroom, two bath should be costing you over $300,000. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. When men cannot afford housing and you have women running around thinking that they are some fucking prize. Okay. When really to any man that doesn't love you, you are a toy. You are a sex toy. Mm -hmm. That he has to decide whether or not he wants to keep or not. This is you're a prize to a simp who, who values you over himself. You're a prize to those losers. But you're not a prize to a man who has his priorities in, over, in, in order. You are a toy. You can possibly move up to a companion if he puts a ring on it. But to guys like Future, okay, you're a toy. Russell Wilson is the simp. You know, the passport bros, they're the simps. That have... Mm -hmm. Woken up, they found their nuts. Mm -hmm. They may be still chasing pussy overseas, getting murked and played and 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 left destitute and shit because they haven't learned their fucking lessons. But at least they're not doing it here because the cost is too high. But in mm -hmm. this in South Korea, because housing is so high, then relationships have went kaput. Because women think that they're the prize. They somehow this American feminist shit has infected their women. Mm. They're not even trying to do 50-50. 
So now you have a, over 150 elementary schools have no first graders. Do you know what this is? Mm -mm. On a bigger scale, what is this? That's all right, population control almost. It's genocide. Yes, it's mm -hmm. self genocide. Mm -hmm. It's genocide. It's literally genocide. 150 elementary schools? Not a class, schools. That's crazy. Let's play it. Let's, uh, let's see how silly, let's see what the silly bitches have to say about this type of situation. This is for being action, y'all. According to the Korea Herald, 157 elementary schools across South Korea do not have any first graders set to enroll in March. A record low number of new students is also expected for the upcoming school year. Nearly every single provincial and metropolitan area had at least one elementary school that was not expecting any new students. This marks the lowest number of new first graders since the government began keeping track back in 1970. A population drop began in South Korea in 2017 with women refusing to mate with their oppressors. South Did you hear that? Now, keep in mind, 2017 was the COVID years for them. For us, it was 18 through 20, but for them, it was 17. Because remember, Trump was a little late on that shit. Mm -hmm. Right. So since 2017, she called the men in South Korea their oppressors. Damn. And to that, I say, well, you get out there and you pay some roads. You work the oil fields. You handle the, the electric conductors. You pick up the trash. You be the cops. You enforce laws. You build the houses. Mm -hmm. You know, since we're your oppressors and you want to be, you know, diverse. You want the equity and you want to be included well, then here, we'll step back and let you do it. Since we're such, such oppressors. I'll continue. South Korea's birth rate has consistently fallen every single year since 2015. This is 4B. Women are simply refusing to give birth to future generations. They're not refusing to give birth the men aren't fucking them like that the men are being they're practicing discipline you understand the men are pra practicing discipline it's not like all of a sudden women just they just stop being horny and stop spreading their legs it's just the men started practicing discipline plus the birth rate a lot of uh miscarriages have been going on that happened here also in the united states also in the UK and other countries where there are not a lot of melanin, where the majority population is non-melanated people. This is why uh, Roe versus Wade was overturned. This is what the abortion rights thing is all about, is that you're not having enough children to sustain society. The birth rates have collapsed all across the globe because the Earth's magnetic, electromagnetic field has spun up. The dangerous radiation that a fuck that fucks with people of non-melanated uh descent white folks they don't have the melanin to fight that radiation off and the first thing it affects is their sperm cells their birth rates mm. their their literal dna populate birth populations have dropped all over the globe by people who don't have the melanin to protect themselves from this radiation why do you think the migrants are here? That's why the migrants are here. They'll be damned they turn this country over to the niggas. We've been talking about them uh, trying to maintain white supremacy for the next 50 to 500 years or whatever since what? The late 90s, early 2000s? Do we remember those conversations? All the time. Right. And what do a lot of those Hispanics label themselves as? Yep. Them Arabs. 
Indians as whites. Oh. Right. They mm -hmm. label themselves as white. They gladly accept the white moniker. Mm -hmm. Shit, you go to any South American country, they they those mothers tell their daughters, don't bring home nothing darker than, than you. Mm -hmm. They're trying to breathe out the black gene. Argentina, they heavy on that. Yes. Remember they president said that he says uh, uh black people that's a Brazil problem, indigenous people that's a ship to land problem, you know, something like that. Now they pride but themselves I, on that shit. But I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, any rate, the cycle is over. After watching this TikTok, I replied, Yeah, female teachers out of work. That will show men. One person replied, They'll find work doing something else. Like what? <laughs> like what? If you spent years and four years in school or two years in school getting your teacher's degree, mm -hmm. getting a, an associate or a bachelor's degree in education, then what the fuck? What other job are you going to fucking work? If you can't be a teacher with an education degree and a fifty to eighty to a hundred thousand dollar plus interest student loan debt for the upcoming school year, nearly every single provincial and metropolitan in South Korea in 2017, with women refusing to mate with their oppressors. South Korea's fifteen. Sorry. Future generation. The, wrong the cycle is over. After watching this TikTok, I replied, Yeah, female teachers out of work. That will show men. One person replied, They'll find work doing something else. I said again, Sounds like other women will suffer. Hmm, carry on. Explain how will other women suffer from this? Of course, to me, it seems pretty natural. But I said, Have you ever been to a daycare center, elementary school, baby nursing ward? You see men or women the reply okay then men should enter the daycare system looking at this conversation i could not help but do the next logical thing look at the stats korean women have no idea what the phobia movement is and we need to stop this misinformation online by now you've probably heard that korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world and a lot of people on tiktok specifically are attributing this to the phobia movement no baby with no modern day bug we have look at this chick don't have no baby with no modern day bum she looked like she date nothing but bums Mosh, do she look like she date upstanding, well-to-do black Man, people? as soon as she opened her mouth, I, I kind of already figured where she was at, bro. Okay. I was the like, okay, here we go. To make morons go extinct yeah. like dinosaurs. And the, the wait, morons listen. make morons. Man. No baby with no modern day bug. We have the power to make morons go extinct like dinosaurs. That means you go, you go the extinct too. morons here are just creating mediocrity which if you don't know it's mediocrity you dumb bitch <laughs> it's not mediocrity it's mediocrity you know what that sound like let me the, tell you what that irony. sound like you know what that sounds like it sounds like uh remember when uh damon wayne used to do that prison house babble on the living color like a... yeah 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 that that's what she sounded yeah. like Trying to use big words you don't even know the meaning of and shit. Yeah, that's why she said mediocrity. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why she said mediocrity. Oh my God. Like, you do understand that. I I've said this a thousand times. I told this to this girl. Like, you are the first, middle, and last defense to your womb. Mm -hmm. Not some man. Not the government, not an abortion pill, not a morning after pill. You are. You what? are the first pill and last defense to your womb. Who you open your legs with legs to is who you want to have, especially with without birth control, mm -hmm. is who you want to have sex with. I mean, who you want to have a children with. You go raw with him with no birth control. This is who you want to have a baby with. I get it. We're humans. We're going to, you know, mm -hmm. have fun. We're gonna have our fun. Right. But you letting this dude dump inside you. Don't pretend like you don't know when a guy is getting ready to explode. 
Come on now. You had enough experience as a woman to know, okay, he getting ready. I've been with enough women that, shit in my 20 early 20s to know that they know. What? They push you off quick. Whether the condom is on or not, they don't want to run the risk. But your mating choices speaks a lot about you, especially who you have children with. Mm -hmm. they, tell, they tell everything about you. You understand? Now, understand, I'm... There are some women who might have a baby by a dude and then they wind up snapping out of the dumb shit and realizing mm -hmm. that they were sick. Hopefully they, they, it, it'll happen before they hit 30 because they still have a chance. And you, right. you know where I stand for this. Once you have a kid, the only the guys you should be dating is a guy with a kid. I've been saying that. I'm like, yeah. I don't see why that's such a bad thing. Like, It's like, why waste somebody's time and, you know, I'm like, why even go there? I mean, okay, if you got one, then maybe, you know what I'm saying? But for real, I'm like, you know, that it kind of feeds the purpose. No, South Korea does not have Section 8. <laughs> I'm making allegations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, who is oh, that? Is. Oh, who oh, said God. making allegations? Oh, Jibba Jibba. <laughs> These folks should set aside 90k before having sex dating or <laughs> shit. Where are they gonna get it from? Women like upper body strength, lack torque strength in their hands and wrists, can't do hard jobs long term without falling apart quickly. There's no reason why we men keep enabling them. Because you know it's mm -hmm. almost like dealing with a, a with like with a a, a cat. Mm -hmm. You know, the cat is gonna knock some stuff off the shelf, off the counter, or whatnot. You know, the cat's not going to come when you call it. Cat has it has its own mind. It's not like a dog. Right. You know, you know cat has its own mind. But you tolerate the cat because, you know, it's a cat. Mm -hmm. Occasionally it'll come up, it'll lay in your lap, let you rub its fur, and then it'll go off and do its own goddamn thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's pretty right. much... You know, you 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 let them do that shit because you, you tolerate them because they're the opposite sex. They provide benefits. Mm -hmm. so what you gonna do fuck each other. You gonna puffy your way through life. <laughs> no. <laughs> shit. He said, "Yup, I never saw a female guardsman until they put the hydraulic pickup arm on the truck." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's see, let the women lift the boxes on their own, let the women build their own houses, force the women out of the office jobs and into construction industrial jobs. You know, I've always said, like, look, for these hardcore, like these chicks on this on this little video, like if mm. you have such a huge problem with men so bad, there are ghost towns out here that you can go and buy. You guys can put your money together since y'all balling bad bitches. Y'all can put y'all money together, hire an all-female construction crew to refurbish these places. Mm -hmm. Okay? And all of y'all can move in there. You can hire an all-female police force and have a female mayor and female governance, and y'all can do all the little female shit without men. But we've already seen that social experiment. And it's failed miserably every time because y'all can't stand each other. Even the lesbians, y'all cannot stand each other. Y'all kick each other's asses. I and mean, not to mention they got the highest divorce rate out of anybody. Yes. And it's like 78% violence. or something crazy like that, bro. Yeah. Domestic violence is right up there. It's in the 80s. It's in the 80s as percentage wise, whereas male female is in the 40s. Okay, but in women, same sex female relationships, just like with males, the domestic violence rates are up there in the in the 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. And the police, Charles will tell you, they see that shit as mutual fucking combat. Mm -hmm. they, it ain't the, the, there are plenty of girls who have been come came up murdered 
by their little lesbian counterparts mm -hmm. who have called the police multiple times and the police like mutual combat mutual combat mutual combat and next thing you know your your dead body is now in the trunk being driven into into detroit right the fuck out of here but they don't want to do that you know why because they know the truth yeah water seeks its own level that is nature mm. let them wither away and starve for their beliefs give these women true equality and not this fake crap that we give them now and that's exactly i have to be honest that's what this whole passport movement is this is why women are so upset because the men who are over the age of 35 that they would depend on you know to be with them you know the old the dudes who used to play stepdaddy on as a mm -hmm. collective level they've woken right. up they've decided to leave the simps have decided hey it's better for me over the age of 45 to go overseas where my money stretches 50 well one dollar is worth 55 of theirs mm -hmm. it's better for me to go overseas maybe meet some some young woman in her uh mid to early 20s or whatnot uh have have a start a family with her raise my kids maybe i'll be around to maybe i might make it to graduation i probably won't on the oldest but i will leave i will leave them the money my children will not grow up in poverty my wife and my children they will be my legacy it doesn't matter about the genetics i'm leaving a legacy these this is my family they'll never be poor because i'm gonna teach my wife the business how to manage the money everything we're gonna do this with the kids you get a better education over in the philippines and thailand than you do here in america anyway because mm. they focus on economics they focus on diverse language skills mm. do you understand they pay for your college oh really you know i don't know mean? that do i'll be watching these passport bro videos these filipino women and thailand women they be having perfect teeth mm. living out in a fucking province that's like the ghetto they be having perfect teeth you think they were born that way mm. no their systems are way a lot better. The only reason why they are quote unquote third world countries is because they don't have a gross domestic product to build mm. off of. So they rely on tourism and expats to help grow their economy because they know that they come there, they marry into marry into their culture and they build businesses and houses and start families. They pass that wealth on for generations to come. Mm. Why the fuck would I do that here where let's say I got a hundred thousand dollars and I die. If I own a house, my kids are going to have to pay the death tax because it's a transfer of wealth. You got to pay a transfer of wealth tax, AKA the death tax. Some guys say you ain't got to pay a death tax here in America. Like, yeah, if your family ain't got shit, what the fuck they going to do? Tax you on, on the car that you still making payments on. Right. <laughs> right what the fuck you ain't got shit so no they don't tax you anybody tell me if i'm wrong those of y'all in the chat if you had a family member that had over a hundred thousand dollars in, in, in actual assets like a house or a business or whatnot please tell me am i wrong do the does the government do they or do they not charge you a tax on the transfer of wealth Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm about to look this up. Yeah. I never heard of it. I'm glad you're saying it because I've never heard of that. Yeah, like he said, PA has an inheritance tax. Mm. The fuck is that? That's a death tax. Is it, is it operable state by state or something like that? It does. Well, yeah. But okay. usually the federal government will nail your ass if you got some type of money. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully these women won't be so dumb. Let them still start to the point of death and sim simply submit. Modern men need to let the experiment go all the way to its proper conclusion. I have said for years that the biggest detriment that has happened to black society has been the home act, welfare, the social benefits, because mm -hmm. that has to have been replaced by the government, white zaddy. You take yeah. that away and then where will the women turn? some will turn to prostitution 
All right. Some will become destitute and homeless. And some will actually be like, you know what? I'll suck his dick and make him a steak dinner. Because mm -hmm. and, and pay half the bills. Because I'll be damned if he'll, I'll be out here on the street. On TikTok, you had women last year talking about, look, I, I need a roommate. Like, I don't care. I need a roommate. I don't care if it's a girl. or No, they were saying they'd rather live with a guy because the girls are just too much. Like, look, if I have to fuck you occasionally, I don't care. I need help with these bills. Mm -hmm. You had women on TikTok saying that. That was a trend that went on during uh, last summer. You take away the financial benefits that the government economically enslaves women with. And you will see the same thing that's going on. This is funny, though. In South Korea, these women, stop, you know, women, but the women stop having sex with the men, which I doubt that that's what's going on. I think the men are smarter than that. they know fuck this shit can't afford it south korea i doubt very highly has a nursing home i doubt very highly that they they have a uh welfare i doubt very oh. highly that they take care of their elders like that that's one of the things about moving out east to a country that's not under the crown mm -hmm. is that they don't do that nursing home shit they don't do oh, that no. welfare shit. They don't do that social security shit. You either make it or 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 you don't. This is why they sit up there and talk about um, you having to take care of the parents and all of that stuff. The oldest or the youngest is in charge of taking care of the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't get a monthly check to pay their bills. Once they're past working age, they move in. They either move in or you pay their bills. But either way, you're paying bills. Yeah, most South Asian countries do not have SSI or retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the women in South Korea are fucked. Yeah. The men, men can do physical labor up until their bodies break. When you're in a female, you're working in an office job, they usually age you out. Mm -hmm. They age you out because they replace you with a younger, smarter, hotter, more productive model, especially in the age of AI. Your jobs are going away. So you can sit up there and cheer the genocide of, of a people all you want to because of economics. But bitch, you right behind them. You're right behind them here in the United States, here in France, here in the UK, here in Canada, mm -hmm. Australia. <laughs> Look, he ain't listening. He don't tap text, texting on his phone. <sighs> yeah, and the landlords are declining Section 8 vouchers. This shit is going to pot. Anyway, let's get back to this. I'm just, I'm ranting because I'm angry. It's a radical feminist movement that basically tells women to completely eliminate men in their lives. When you search up the term on TikTok, you will not see one single Korean person being like, yes, this is me right now. This is me. I'm full B. We can't afford our life and we are married. If we have our baby, it'll be not good for our love. And their standards have gone up really, really high. And the living cost in Korea, as you know, is quite high. As someone who has lived in Korea for four years, the first and only time I've ever heard about this movement is from TikTok, from Western creators. Yeah, because it's a stupid ass concept. They just put a name on it. And I doubt very highly, not one time did she find a Korean woman saying, yeah, we're on strike against the men because we're the feminists and blah, 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 blah. Your thing's sad to a community and to close down their neighborhood grade school. 
We must remember that grade schools are more than just places where young children go to school. They are places for PTA meetings, Christmas concerts, field days, safe playgrounds, elections, and some communities must face the fact that those events will no longer be held at their local elementary school. So let's suppose the Western 4B movement actually does pick up some steam. The most obvious place it would affect is elementary schools and their teachers, most of them are women. According to Career Explorer, not only are most elementary school teachers female, but an overwhelming majority are female. 87% of grade school teachers in America are women. Say goodbye to that job market. This will of course you? mean that the celebration of the 4B movement in America is going to affect, that's right, other women. The so 4B movement is a way for women to stand up against these problems and create a more equal and just society. An equal and just society. What's unequal and what's unjust about this society between men and women as it stands today? By rejecting traditional roles and expectations, the women involved in this movement are taking a powerful stance and demanding change. I think it's time that women in America need to start their own version of the 4B movement because men ain't shit. And what if child... Because men ain't shit. Hey. Hey. You ain't shit. Right? Y'all hear that? Y'all ain't shit. Y'all ain't shit. Some young bitch... Who still got Simulac on her breath just said y'all ain't shit. <laughs> care workers. According to Zippa, of the over 250,000 child daycare workers in America, 88.7, almost 89% of those workers are, yet again, women. Yet another time where we see the celebration of a 4B movement directly affecting women's employment. It's so successful, in fact. Okay, this right here, this chick killed me. I mean, do she look like men are tripping all over her? <laughs> Is she the type? I mean, who's breaking their neck? Who's beating down her door? Who's stopping her in the streets asking her for her Instagram? Right? That... Now, South Korea has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. The number of births in South Korea outnumber the number of births in South Korea. It's and it's good. hilarious because all the men and the government are like, oh my God, what do we do? We, they, they don't want to like talk to us. They don't want to date us. They don't want, what do we do? That's like not what they're saying. This is shit that she's making up in her head. She has no idea what the fuck they're saying. The Korean women and men are saying over there concerning their low birth rates. Like everything's in shambles. We don't know what to do. When South Korean women have been very clear from day one, they're like, hey, either you get your act together or we are literally eliminating all of this. Like we are shutting it down. So that's the 4B movement and why I'm so obsessed with it and why I think we should have the 4B movement everywhere. And what if you are a maternity nurse? It looks like you too are in the crosshairs of the rising Western 4B movement. Over 90% of maternity nurses are women well so why is it that in a society like korea where getting married is really pushed on us and you know promoted why are so many men and women choosing not to marry number one reason that we need to look at is obviously the housing prices did you hear what she just said this is a woman who's actually in south korea and here's the graph she said the number one reason why we stop getting married and having babies is because of the housing prices change in CEO's apartment prices look how they skyrocketed every month just skyrocketing the housing prices in korea has been continuing to increase specifically in seoul especially if you have children you want to send them to um, an environment where there's a better education system there's better academies there's better schools there's a better learning environment and a lot of people will pick seoul for that so in 2020 the median household income for a family of four was at 57 million one which comes to be about $43,000 in US dollars. How and that's affordable. Average guys, 43K a year, maintaining a household, you and your chick, 
you pay the rent she got the electrics and whatnot you know 70 30 or quote unquote 50 50 but really it's 70 30. there's no way in hell you supposed to be living anywhere that you can't afford to rent by yourself which you should be paying that way you get a free check every month she get a free check every month you can pay your car note you know your insurance all that other stuff your, your your toiletries your little goods and services between the both of y'all and women's spirits spend more money on their upkeep than men that's a fair balance both of y'all get quote unquote free checks however the average housing prices in korea came to be about 900 million one which comes to about 700 thousand usd so and that's for a house you paying 700k for a house it's just you know eventually just you two that's ridiculous obviously with your work environment not having the right support system for you to have a child they're just not gonna have a child okay i'm just gonna work i can't even afford to get a house anyway so it makes sense. Another thing is that according to OCED statistics, Korea has one of the most longest working hours in the world. Statistics show that according to the OCED working hours average, Koreans work for more than about two months extra for a year. So the misogyny and patriarchy has gotten so bad in South Korea that the young women are participating in this movement that they're calling the 4B movement. See how stupid she is? She don't even know what the fuck she's talking about, just like all the other girls. It took a South Korean girl or woman to explain what the problem is in South Korea. Same problem we're having here in the United States. Has nothing to do with feminism. Has everything to do with affordability. But here, feminism on top of affordability is the problem. Women in South Korea are so tired of fighting against this bullshit that they're just opting out. Only this thing is about the fact that South Korean women got so tired of fighting against the system that was keeping everything in place. They just like, we're just, we're just gonna check out. We're just not gonna participate anymore. As so basically what she's saying is that the women of South Korea chose death over being in a relationship with a man and maintaining society and having children and you know, pretty much maintaining the order, the social order of life. They've chosen to be homeless and destitute and, and starved and beaten and, and great and whatnot. Instead of being with the men that, you know, they've been raised around their whole lives. That's what she's telling us. Suddenly that happened when the housing crisis for them exploded. You can see it's absolutely okay. having an effect. Uh, their birth rate is going way down. So a lot of the media blames it on the high cost of housing and um, competitive education for kids. But as it notes here, increasing gender tensions are another reason yeah. uh, regularly cited. Living in a country that is scheduled to close several hundred schools every calendar year, there's nothing funny nor a light side from which to look at large towns and cities of people losing young children. With such a solemn topic being faced by an ever-growing number of new municipalities across many countries, perhaps it is the glee and the eagerness at which many young ladies speak on the topic that is most startling to me personally. It is quite possible that male-female interrelations is a contributing factor to the growing number of elementary schools closing not just in Korea and Japan, but in many first world countries. However, the growing outcry from a growing number of vocal young ladies on social media forces us to ask a simple question. What might be the motivation for these growing number of young ladies to not just show excitement for such a trend, but also to show excitement to a trend that will in the end cannibalize a large number of women's employment options? Maybe this level of discontent has been bred of several decades of the physical ritual of mating being rendered down into a joyful bodily exercise and as a growing number of men are falling out of the dating market and seemingly a growing number of women are sharing a smaller group of men maybe this cry for a 4b movement to come to the west is simply the cry of many spawn lovers pining 
I hate to tell him this, but it's already here, whether we appreciate it or not. Oh, he left. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's get into the comments. These landlords are declining section. They vouch. Yeah, we went through that. I learned that watching a Singapore documentary, an 80 year old taxi driver told this story. T. Son Johnson, the Asian female's equivalent of lying flat. <laughs> you have to ask what's next. The future is promised to the folks with good credit scores. Poor credit score folks are facing genocide. Yeah, because they will have no place to go, especially in even in this country. Because as we see, they they're killing Section Eight. And down here in Atlanta, they they had a whole what a whole swath of apartment complexes that after COVID was over, they sent people these people their letters saying, "Hey, come." January 1st, we're no longer accepting, accepting Section 8. Y'all got to move somewhere else. It was a big news story. So they're going extinct as a people. That's why a lot of movies that Koreans are epi oh, apologetic now. So you agree. The future will also be shared by those holding Bitcoin. Wait till you see the Bitcoin price next summer. You know what? I was talking Maj earlier today because it was a thing. Uh, I'm going to share it. The thing with Dame Dash. We're going to revisit uh, Dame Dash and Kanye's most viral moments talking about black men and money. All right. I'll save it till I, I revisit those. Let's see. Americans have a hoarding problem. <laughs> yeah, because they don't. It's like, what are you hoarding? You know, it's like, what are you hoarding? I, I'll never understand that. You know, if you're not hoarding assets, then what are you hoarding? Your heart, <laughs> you know, your, your your vagina after you passed it around the whole world, the whole block, you know, and spun the block with it. And now because, you know, Chad or, or Tyrone hasn't suddenly become, you know, the, the, the three-piece suit wearing guy for nine to five that come home and put on some tens and sag his, his fucking pants and and murk niggas in the street after work now that that dream is over like what are you what are you hoarding <laughs> thanks man we say hall of fame bitcoin and silver is the future i think you know what lockheed martin war stocks war stocks right now is that's what you should bitcoin and war stocks and gold and silver you're right silver and gold bitcoin and war stocks that's what you should be investing in and a lot of vr stuff especially vr dating i need to check on my stock i bought that stuff last year and i think i peeped in on on it in january and it was steady growing Let's see, they would absolutely prefer homelessness rather than cooperating with a man who is less than 11 on a scale of 1 to 10. Well, hey, not my problem. Fighting for a spot underneath a bridge. Yeah, the I-20 85 connector. <laughs> for those of you who know about Atlanta, the I-20 85 connector is where a lot of the homeless encampment is. Is he the same in Pittsburgh? Retirement communities and trailer parks are up in fees. All right, so here's one of the things me and Moss was talking about earlier today about Dame Dash when he said this. <laughs> I take my props. Give a fuck about props. I care. My, yeah, I do get my props. I'm not a mogul. I'm a tycoon. I sell oil. Don't disrespect me and say I do everything everybody else does. And I put up my own money. All these so-called moguls y'all talking about, you mm -hmm. name one of them that put their own dough up. You know, a boss, you're only the boss if you put up your own money. If you don't put up your own money, I don't care how much somebody gives you, you're nothing but a supervisor. It's not yours. So how much money can you get paid to not... I, there's no money in this world for someone to pay me so they could call me, so I could call them a boss. That's like calling somebody daddy. That's How can a man call another man, yo, that's my boss? We don't do that. I mean, everybody at some point no, has to have don't. a boss, right? No, not in Harlem. Oh, okay. Put it like this. Because you're also, somebody's boss. No, I'm not somebody's boss. I, I'm. When I was in the street, mm -hmm. it was, someone wasn't your boss. They gave you an opportunity. Okay. They gave you some work. You go make it, and then you bring it back. You can go buy your own work. You do whatever you want. 
It's called consignment. So why this can't be all work? This corporate America, we could be using this. You don't this. own it. But, but, you I'm, you don't own it. but I'm telling you, it. no, I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why. Hold on, hold on, hold on, question, listen, question. Listen, listen, let me listen, ask you a question. Listen. Can you give it to your son? Can I give what to my son? Whatever you want. this company, I absolutely positively can. How? Why? Because I own shares of this company. You bought them? Yes. What I'm saying is. Can your son eat? Is this yours to give the whole company this to you? This whole company is I'm not asking my son's, no. Exactly. It's not mine. But can, I wait, wait, stop. Listen, listen. That's not my question. If your son needs a job here, can you give it to him? No. No. If your son needs to get some money out the bank from here, some cash flow, can you get it? No. All right. You don't own this. But I can you take, stop. The, I can I'm take the money you. from here to invest in no, myself. No, it's not yours. I'm not going to fight for something I don't own. Men don't do that. I don't fight for other n****s. I fight for me. I'm not a doula. I'm not going to build somebody else's company and then take shares so my son can f*** all that. See, no, listen, company, listen, though. what I'm saying. But what about taking I'm the money? You come to work every day. Why did you take whatever. Stop. Don't say you're speaking my business and you don't know what you're talking about. I ain't take no money from Def Jam. What you talking about? What I mean about? take, I mean they cut you a no, check. No, they didn't cut me a check. We had a formula based on performance. And they calculated and we got paid. That's and they will stop. That's not Y'all understand what he's saying now? 10, 15, 20 years later? Does, does, did, has it resonated with you now? What Dame Dash was saying? Because remember, we crucified him. Some of us crucified the shit out of him when he first said that. But I was like, no, nah, like he right. You know, ownership is key. Working for somebody, what they say in that one movie, the working man is a sucker. Eventually, you have to be able to feed yourself because if you continually, especially over the age of 40, you continually let somebody determine how you eat and how you live and whatnot through a job. And we see how the market is moving, the job market, uh, the, the housing market, the financial market. We're looking at all of this shit. Technology is improving every day, every day. You have to diversify your bonds, nigga. <laughs> you have to find other ways of, of being able to feed not just yourself or your family if you have one. Because if you don't, especially as a black man, the most invisible man in this country, unless they need to blame somebody on. Yeah, go to work, come home, laid off. Y'all remember that video I do, did where the dude, he freaked out, the black guy. He had a full meltdown because his job announced to the workers that they lost their pension. They lost their pension. I've been working here 20 some years. The fuck you mean I ain't getting no pension? Yeah, them days are over. Yeah, have two jobs, at least two side hustles, something. We spoke about that. Like, look, if you can't work two jobs, you need to legally find a way to make that money. A lot of guys are pushing the Bitcoin. All right. I pushed the stocks. I cashed all my stocks in except for my gold stock on Robin Hood because I'm switching over to Charles Schwab. I kept the gold stock. I didn't want to cash that in. That sucker is growing. Growing. The Lockheed Martin stock is next. Look, if you just have to drop $25 um, a, week, a week or a month on it, you keep doing that. Little $10 here. Five dollars there. You keep doing that shit. It'll benefit you in the long run. That spliff will benefit you right now. That beer will benefit you right now. But eventually that beer, that beer money is not gonna pay your fucking bills. You have to have some sort of financial discipline. As black men, we're not taught that. We're not taught that at home. We're not taught that in school. We're not taught that in the media. All they promote is 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 
entertainment and, and dumb gangster nigga shit dysfunctional behavior that's all they feed us then we get situations like this i mean do it yourself ha, fact, you did take a few steps back to go you ain't got the answers, water. man. You ain't got the answers. I, you, you ain't got you, the if, answers. If you, if, you, you ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Doing what? You ain't got. Come on, chill out. You bro. ain't got the answers. Kanye, relax. You ain't got. Yeah, what have you been doing more than him? What? What? We all know the situation Kanye found himself in. Did we see uh, the, the, the small hats taking sway stuff away from him and devaluing him? Where he went from a billionaire to like a hundred millionaire? Huh? Were they closing sway's bank accounts? This motherfucker broke his neck so hard to be, to have white people in control of his shit. Now look at him. This stupid motherfucker let Candace Owens and her husband con him into buying Parler, which is supposed to be in the right wing equivalent to, to Twitter. It was a dying fucking uh, business venture. This motherfucker bought it because Twitter banned him. So fucking stupid. Paid millions of dollars for a dead platform. You ain't got the answers, babe. The bro, answers. I'm asking you you ain't question. been doing the education. Bro. You ain't been doing the education. Kanye, calm down. You don't have the answer. You say even with a college degree, a lot of the companies want you to be more educated than everyone else. With experience, by the way. <laughs> with experience. You say Lionel said uh Dame Dash don't really know what he's talking about he don't understand shares he wasn't really talking about shares he, he was talking about being a business owner keep in mind that interview was a long time ago just like this with kanye it was a long time ago we wasn't even talking about crypto what was a cryptocurrency bitcoin remember motherfuckers used to have to mine bitcoin in order to have bitcoin remember now you can just get it on cash app you can buy bitcoin on cash app so yeah at that time a street dude like dame no nah, he wasn't he ain't no jack crap about no damn stocks and bonds and dividends and whatnot he wanted his check cut just like ice cube when he was with nwa he cut a record and he walked into jerry heller's office like okay i cut a record give me my goddamn check what we ain't even released that i don't give a fuck i need my money complete misunderstanding of of how financial transactions work because you know you got brothers coming from the streets but the bottom line of his message is ownership is key you write the check you don't have somebody write you a check and if somebody is writing you a check, you need to take a portion of that money that you've earned, busting your ass, and use it to help secure your future and pay your freedoms from that motherfucker writing you a check. Even if you don't write nobody else a check, talking about some employment, at least you got the check writing skills to pay the bills. A lot of brothers now, they're using YouTube. YouTube is very friendly to, to male content, but that's changing now. We saw a, saw a lot of people get their channels yanked over the past, what, eight months to a year, year and a half? I mean, we saw them yank down Cynthia G. What's the name? The guy, uh, uh, League of Men, who used to be Tribe of Men, Legion of Men or whatever. Yeah, they demonetized him. The white guy that's in Romania right now, yeah, they demonetized his channel, gave him the runaround. I had to tell him, I'm like, look, bro, I hate to tell you this, but these YouTube terms and guidelines and whatnot, all this little red pill content and shit, they consider that to be hate speech. They don't give a fuck 
what you call yourself trying to do in 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 your heart and in your mind they consider that to be hate speech they're going to yank your channel or at least yank your monetization You talking about Coach Red Pill in Romania or Andrew Tate? No, I'm talking about the uh, uh, League of Men. He used to go by Tribe of Men. Oh, he goes by Legion of Men. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me see. Am I spelling that right? I'm, I'm in the dark. I probably spelled that completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> the hell? Let me see. Descriptions. I think my internet is done. <laughs> uh. Yeah, y'all see who I'm subscribed to right here on the left. Oh, that Dalton situation. Man, I watched that whole situation. Man, that was a shit show. Ooh, that was a shit show. Man. I know her. When they walk her up out of there, it's going to be epic. Epic. Let me see. I already passed them up. Let me see here. I think I may have already passed them. Let me see. Uh, unless they've messed around here and yanked this channel. Because the last video he did was a couple of days ago where he talked about how they uh they yanked how they demonetized this channel. And how he was trying to get it up he was trying to get it back up he was talking to youtube and they were just you know they were just going in circles with him and then he hasn't posted anything since uh let's see here yeah i think they got him i think they got him because he's not in my subscription uh thing Oops, I know I still spelled that wrong. Yeah, I think they got him. I think they took his channel down. Yeah, I think they, they took his channel down. Let me see. Let's see if he might be listed under Tribe of Men. But he used to do, a, well, he did a lot of, uh, well, does a lot of red pill content. Oh, I, okay, I think this is him. Okay, Legion of Men. Okay. All right, there, here he is. All right. All right, he's still up. Yeah, I knew I was spelling Legion wrong. Let's see here. Let's see videos. Yeah, here it is, right here. You see this video? YouTube demonetized my channel for an insane reason. And he's put up, what, three videos since? Like this was four days ago, then two days ago, one day, seven hours ago. You know, is Destiny okay? Yeah, they... They they taking they yanking channels. Oh, let me. Okay, I thought I was subscribed to them over here. It must be on the Better True channel. But they yanking channels. Oh, let me show you. I'm sorry. <laughs> here you go. Yeah, here he is. I'm sorry. My bad. Here's his channel. Make masculinity great again. You know, little red pill stuff or whatever. Y'all see it? Yeah, they. Yeah, they. They demonetized his channel. They demonetized mine, what, over a year ago. Like, I, I don't care. Like, this was beer money. The, the Bitter Truth Show channel, that was beer money to me. I didn't care. I don't care. You, There are men who make their living off of YouTube through Cash App, Super Chats, uh, subscriptions, donations, whatever. Do what you got to do. I mean, at times are tough. You know, at least be a man about it. 
but understand that they can yank this from you at any time and just like with when they yanked cynthia g's and, and the other people's channels like yo i hope you got some type of other side hustle that can sustain you or you've done something with the money outside of uh you know jet skis and and and, and vacations and shit you know because we fuck off money because we don't have financial literacy please don't fuck off your money 30 for 30 broke y'all remember that that episode where they show all these athletes who after three years in the league what how they go broke and why they went broke because when they had money i mean they was doing st things like buying gorilla fur fucking coats that they never wear the parking lot is a competition on who's got the baddest car who's got the biggest home russell wilson he had two goddamn mansions one in seattle one in denver i think he finally sold the seattle mansion but he took a three million dollar loss on it or something like that he took a loss on it he had to undersell it yeah you got two years left of big money on your contract that 200 something million you're never going to see that money because they cut you before that contract came into play so that a hundred and something million dollars that they traded on his original contract with seattle he gets two years of that from denver and then after that he gets nothing except his nfl pension because he's been in the league for at least nine years yeah the gorilla fur coat is mad wild yeah i know he's in pittsburgh now but he's not going to be the starter but for so long because justin fields him going to pittsburgh was my worst nightmare as a browns fan because that dude can ball the bears never built a team around him they didn't give a fuck about him they did him dirty but the good news is that he got out of chicago now he's in pittsburgh and the pittsburgh rebuilds their offense they need another wide receiver okay and maybe some offensive line help they're gonna be okay they're gonna be okay justin fields after week six will take over so that way they don't have to give uh chicago a fourth round pick they can go ahead and give them the sixth round pick and then it's lights out and russell wilson will be cut and nobody's going to pick him up maybe some i don't know whoever is desperate for a, a goofy ass backup who's more interested in being famous let's ride let's ride let's ride practicing his let's ride commercials and shit instead of learning the playbook i mean do you know how fucking shitty of a of a player you have to be for a team to cut you and eat 85 million dollars a year for two years do you realize how much of a fucking headache you have to be for that to happen sean payton cussing at you cussing you out on the sidelines They ain't got to turn around and lie in the press conference and tell us what we what what we didn't see with our own eyes. I wasn't cussing at him. I was cussing about the call. Yeah, what was the call and 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 how was it supposed to go? Can you explain that to us? What did Russell fuck up now? He can't play within a structured offense. He says the errors scheduled to divorce him somewhere around somewhere around 2027 when the money runs out where the money reside where the money reside <laughs> uh, come and buy your taxes <laughs> yeah i figure it'll be around that time once the money where the nfl money runs out because her her music endeavors went to shit don't know ain't nobody out here trying to to listen to some damn near 40 year old woman with five three to five kids out here trying to twerk in some red bottoms at a gas station talking about something i'm a thotty hoe 
please, girl, please. We look at we see your Instagram. We got pictures of you wearing mouse ears with your family. Get the fuck out of here with that. Your music was trash in the first place. That's why you had to get a simp like Russell. <laughs> yeah, he's too busy trying to be a celebrity with his wife, and she's not even a celebrity like that. He'll move to the booth, the simp that he is. Hey, well, who's going to take him on? The dude has zero personality or charisma. He has zero personality or charisma. Nobody going to take Russell in on no booth. <laughs> I'm not shitting on you. I'm just being honest. Let's see. No, she's going to take his money. She's going to take what little he may have left over eventually, and he'll have to pay that child support. Yeah, he's definitely going to pay child support. But understand, just because you got a $100 million, $100 million contract don't mean you got $100 million in the, $100 million in the bank. You got to look at the 40 to 60% tax a uh, government tax that you got to pay. You got to pay your agent. You got to pay your trainer. You got to pay your hanger owners. You got to pay your mortgage. You know, I mean, they're, they're, by the time you look up out of that hundred million, let's say they gave you a hundred million out up front, you might see maybe anywhere between forty to thirty million in the bank. Meanwhile, you got two twelve million dollar homes that you're paying for. Well, now one $12 million home. And now you got to look and buy another fucking overpriced piece of shit property in, in Pittsburgh. Where they don't even have police officers between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Because you got to appease your wife. <laughs> you, see, you say you knew that would get me yeah yeah and school tax and property tax on a mansion is no joke because you ain't sending your kids to no damn public school while living in, in bel-air you pay those high-ass private school uh taxes in order to make sure that your children gets the best education where they actually teach economics all right where they actually teach uh global uh global politics and whatnot where they actually train your children to prepare themselves for life in the new world computer skills all right all of that stuff that's what private school private school is not public school that you just pay for no no they have special classes <sighs> but us as men as black men the invisible black man we're not the pookies and ray rays we're not the the entertainers of any form we're not the scammers we're not the umars okay the average nine to five working joe we are phased out you understand phased out of this economy we're hanging on by a thread if you're under 35 get ready to get drafted as this war escalates get ready to be drafted don't act like they're not going to reinstitute it pretend that they're not then the biggest and here's the beauty of it the biggest uh uh deployment what it might be is right here here in the united states you might be here or you might go to the middle east or you might go to russia but one of your main deployments is going to be here national guard oh yeah sign up if you want to call yourself not going overseas, maybe you might want to, if you're under 35, maybe you might want to sign up for the National Guard. At least you can go home. <laughs> At least you'll be on American soil. But the other four divisions, yeah, your ass might be getting shipped out. And dying over some bullshit. 
that ain't got nothing to do with you directly. Yeah, but those of us over 35, <laughs> you say the sambos and gumbos are the ones that's ruining our image as black men. I take it the gumbos are, what are the gumbos? Explain it to me. But in all honesty, I think, well, really, okay. From what I've seen, the biggest, the biggest destruction that has been caused to us have been caused to us by the uh, our women who have been caught up in this white lesbian feminist ideology movement. And the children that they produced with the men that they don't want. And yeah, the the small percentage of us, and do understand in American media, the worst of us has always led the media. Has always led the media. Has always led the media. Very few times do you see a positive uh, representation of black men and women in the media. Unless they trying to say, oh, well, this black woman was the first person to do this. Or this black man saved this white child from, from this, that, and the other. Yeah, the rest are invisible as far as the quote-unquote good black men. That's why you have silly-ass black women who have been running around since, what, the 80s? Talking about some all the good black men are either dead or in jail. And now they, you know, oh, they're all gay. Or they all want white women. And now it's the passport bros. They slamming the passport bros. And I get it because, I mean, what y'all have done to Medellin as passport bros, y'all fucking up. And that shit is going to spread down in South America. They need to curb that shit. I told y'all that those men down there do not appreciate you coming down there treating their women like whores. Propositioning their women on the street. And then you wonder why a lot of passport bros you find that a lot of them who are getting kidnapped and murked for the most part is because they are down there chasing pussy. I watch these black passport bro channels and I'm not saying all of them that's down there is getting fucked up like that is brothers. It's a mixture, which is even worse. But I've seen videos with black men. It was four black men who ran a train on a Hispanic woman and they didn't want to pay her her money. She just wanted an extra $200 in her money. And these dusty ass niggas over the age of 40, all of them didn't want to pay her the money to the point where she got violent. When she broke a glass table, they had to literally physically toss her out where the police was called all over $200 in pesos. Bad enough that you got four musty, dusty, crusty, rusty niggas over the age of the four, over the age of 40, running a train on, on a one trashy looking trailer trash type Hispanic woman who looked to be over the age of 35. You putting this out on the internet for the world to see. Look how she acting. No, nigga, what is you doing? Look how you're acting. No wonder scoplamine is, is part of, of the fucking liquid diet down there. You guys are idiots. Another video, dude yelling in this girl's face, telling her to get out. Get out, get out. He all in her goddamn face. You in a foreign country. South America even, they don't even give a fuck about you. You can come up dead in South America and everybody shrugging their shoulders. Hello, what's the girl's name that got killed in Mexico by her friends? They still haven't been extradited. You say a bad body tag shape, Latina broad ain't a come up. No. What's the name of the chick who Shaqu Shaquilla Robinson? 
They don't give a fuck. Yeah, plenty of videos out here of black women getting arrested in foreign countries. The last one was what? The lesbian chick with the skateboard, the homeless chick. She didn't want to pay her rent. Living above a, above a nail salon. So you ain't got money for rent. But your bitch got money to buy a ticket to come out and see you and live with you. But she couldn't front you no rent money. Here, let, how much they charge them for rent? That's it. Here, here's $50 in American money. Pay your rent for the year. I'll be there. We'll find another spot. Last I heard, I think she's getting deported. The last thing you need is dudes who are out here tricking, having arguments with their proxies on camera posting the shit online themselves as if they trying to do something like they big manning like no you look pathetic you this is when they talk about password bros they talk about you when they talk about them negatively they're talking about brothers like you they talk about brothers who who go down there with seven hundred dollars and now they begging on online in order to get you know money so they can get back home Right, because you bring in the American attitude and arrogance to other countries. The fuck are you doing? You supposed to leave all that as soon as you get on the plane. You leave that right at the door before before when you step between the, the door of the actual airplane and the, the uh the tarmac or whatever. I forget what it's whatever. Leave that shit right there. You supposed to exhale go with a fresh new mindset and have yourself a fresh new start even if it is for a week two weeks a weekend however long forever you supposed to work on self-improvement staying out of the way being low-key as fuck so you don't make yourself a target and enjoy your life nope but you gotta be a nigga you got a big boss motherfuckers overseas where you line, wind up in a jail where nobody speaks your language, will speak the English language. You know this Brittany Griner told no story so far about her experience there in that Russian prison. She's kept her mouth shut. You think she had a ball over there? <laughs> You say South American simps are weak as fuck. Their women are already sluts, but they mad at password bros. Well, look, their women are not sluts. It's where the, the passport bros hang out is where the sluts hang out because they know they can get money off of you. That's where the sluts hang out in those vacation areas. They know what hotels y'all like to stay in. They know what areas y'all like to hang out in because the word is out. Yeah, hang out, hang out in the DR, man. Hang out, go here, go to this beach. Yeah, that's where the sluts hang out. You go outside the tourist areas, which I've always said, get outside the tourist areas, see the real fucking um, countryside and whatnot, the real nation experience the real people you say midnight express scared you as a child yeah get out of the tourist areas go see the real people stop propositioning women on the street act like you got some self-respect for for yourself and the people you'll have better results if not then you go ahead and have yourself a sip of scoplamine <laughs> you know or you get set up on a tinder date they find your body floating in the river three days later after your family done paid the ransom oh i remember midnight express that's right the guy that had the drugs that was taped to him and he wound up going to prison and yeah I, okay I, I remember that movie yeah yeah they showed him getting raped in prison and 
you know, the, the, keep in mind, he didn't speak their language, but he understood what they wanted. They made him uh, down. They put him down on his knees and made him look up with his mouth open. And they was having a spitting contest. See who could spit in his mouth. I remember that movie now. Yeah. right now us as men black men we're in a fight or flight mode a lot of us are are, are on pause i get it and you know you not sometimes you you stuck you in a situation where you can't make no moves i, I i'm not going to shit on you for that but if you get an inch you take it you take it you take it everything right now that's showing us in this country is letting us know that this shit is getting ready to come into a bloody fucking collapse play games with yourself if you want to jobs are drying up prices are going up Violence is going up. I mean, damn, y'all are actually, let's be honest, as much as black men don't like Ron DeSantis or whatnot, y'all are actually happy that he's out there signing legislation. Okay, protecting citizens. Property rights and shit. Winning against Disney. Winning against uh, for kids beating back the, the gays from grooming your children the dude is winning hell y'all mad at candace owens because she's saying that the, it's like y'all actually trying to say she trying to come back to the black community just because y'all talking points line up with hers but that is so not what she's doing i mean we get it she's the grifter you know but she's a very well-paid grifter she makes that chick got millions the daily wire needed her and you see what happened when they dumped her by the way all of a sudden they started making a, a fun of her and whatnot and then ben shapiro got called out by pierce morgan and somebody else like well why did you really let her go what because she didn't kiss your jew ass I thought you were the network that embraced freedom of speech. Elon Musk, he may have fired Don Lemon, but he didn't kill his Twitter page. He can still make money. He's just not going to pay him to speak on his goddamn platform. That's all. Hold your own nuts. But that ain't what y'all did, is it? I guess pearly things is going to uh, fill her spot thank you black people are not her target audience they never were her target audience you think she gained more followers or lost them she reactivated her youtube channel anybody can be a star on youtube by the way thanks for the new subscribers who have joined i appreciate y'all because <laughs> this channel is growing out of the ground naturally you know i could easily go back to the other one that's got over 4400 subscribers but nope fresh new start i could easily go back and get that channel monetized again don't want to This is about talking to people who care, who want to listen. Everything else is just bullshit. I'm, I'm not here to entertain you. I may add a little entertainment in it, but I'm not here to entertain you. I'm trying to help. There's no way in hell in 2024 as a disenfranchised black man 
the invisible man, the devil, because you get blamed for everything. It's all Jermaine's fault. Not the shoe make dude, but just <laughs> in general. Uh, it's all your fault. When this shit go belly up, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? You gonna you, this is hold your own nuts time. You have no friends. It's hold your own nuts time. You say I like how she is composed and doesn't get flustered. Well, that comes from you know speaking engagements and all of that stuff. But ah, uh, let's see. Here we go. The future of your. It was another video. Now, I'll say this this supporting the Filipinas family is actually the law. That has nothing to do with passport, bros, though. I watched this. It, it has everything to do pretty much. Because this is the Filipina P video. Hi, folks. Pretty much what this woman right here is talking about here to the left. What she's saying is, because Filipina P is questioning her about the law. She's saying that now that it's, it's a law now that uh, as a child, you have to legally take care of your parents your elders when they get elderly when they have non-working age you are now legally responsible for them as they were legally responsible for you when you were growing up but if you are married to an expat his money is not your money because you can actually do uh what's it called what's it called what's it called when you have your your wife sign the contract where you don't have to pay her uh good lord a prenuptial agreement there we go <laughs> you can do prenuptial agreements in in uh in the philippines all right and they don't circumvent the prenuptial agreements in the philippines from what was explained you know i don't want to go through this whole video because you know philippine p got a little silly with it but the woman here she explained that yeah you're legally obligated but the thing about it is if you're going to be dating overseas especially in the philippines where the crime rate is very low for expats if anything expats get themselves in trouble fucking around with the locals like there was the one white guy who got shot by a filipino rapper but come to find out the the white guy was harassing the women in the club and they didn't take too kindly to that so dude got popped for disrespecting their women sex tourism or not bruh if she don't approach you shut the fuck up stop harassing our women at any rate the crime over there for expats is very low it's usually expat on expat violence like there was a fist fight in dumaguete two white expats throwing blows you know what i'm saying there'd be crimes like that of that nature now don't get me wrong there are some filipino women that do create crimes on their uh expat husbands but that's because they get a dopey ass simp nigga who don't know the game they don't nothing about women so they wind up getting used and eventually uh abused and dumped and left for dead or what not we're starved out because these dudes are suckers they don't know the games that women play but yeah it's a law there and you know if you're smart with your money you know you need to have her sign that prenuptial agreement and you never let really you you don't let any woman know american asian puerto rican canadian whatever you never let let them know what money you're sitting on especially if they're if they're your next of kin their names are on documents you never do that that's so stupid 
you keep that so hush hush to the max it is you don't say nothing How the hell are you going to tell somebody if they find a way to murder you and possibly get away with it, they are, they're going to have an inheritance? <laughs> right, shit. But yeah, but you have to be smart dating overseas. You know, it's no different than dating here. Find you a chick who has very minimal family, you know, especially over there. Because again... No nursing home, no social security, no welfare office in Beirut. Minimal family, parents look like they're well-to-do. Stay out of the fucking province, you know, which is pretty much the slums, as we would call it here in America. For them, it's just natural living, but stay out of the slums. Get you a girl that's got a, a, a job, a degree, a, a, a nice job, something. You should be able to pull that, right? Right? Shouldn't you be able to pull that? Or is the only thing you can pull is, you know, a, 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 a chick. Let's say she would be the equivalent of a chick that worked at Dollar General. Or maybe she one of these Instagram fake bad bitches really don't have a job but you know she texting you for ten dollars for lunch you and 50 other suckers she shoot through when she can the only reason why you tolerate her is because she's pretty and she'll at least suck your dick but she in and out the door she don't never spend the night you don't get no cuddle time. <laughs> yeah, you just thinking the Dollar General girl. Yeah, them little rinky dink minimum wage chicks. You little dust offs. I mean, that's what they are. You don't build lives with chicks like that unless you're around her age. You know, she in her 20s, you in your 20s. They dust offs. If you're over the age of 30, them girls are dust offs to you. You ain't trying to rescue her. Why would you do that overseas with the same type of chick or less? Because she cute. They cute here too. Your whole point is to go over there with your resources, money to live out your retirement age maybe get you a cute little honey get you a chick that might you know well i want because understand in order to as a foreigner you cannot own land or property over there or any type of business you have to unless you partner up with a filipina or a native and this is in a lot of countries a lot of countries you got to partner up with a native so if you're going to do it you might as well make it a business relationship you say men don't rescue strays let them run right keep a box of condoms but then the head head stand nice stand. let them do what the hell they want to do stop trying to save them that's what i was telling that girl earlier on charles's podcast like girl you better get a dude dick whip and, and feed the fuck out of him all his favorite foods watch all his favorite shows you need to play the game and they do that overseas. They play, especially in the Philippines, in Thailand. They play the game with you. Because they want to get married. They want to have kids. They don't want to be left behind. They don't want to be working in the in the bars. Bar girls, that quote unquote prostitutes. They don't want to be those girls. They want to be respectable. But you need a respectable chick in order to do that with. She got to be respectable right off the get-go. Just like here in America. Over there, though, it's like they all over there. The, what's the point wearing makeup and all of that shit and eyelashes? You don't see them with that, that bullshit. 
the hair that black women wear here is their natural hair <laughs> they don't need to wear all that makeup shit it's too fucking hot for that so you definitely got in there a lot of them are pretty so you have to work on personality that's what really bothered me about the whole red pill movement was that you're arguing about prostitutes on social media let them silly bitches be silly bitches concentrate on the women that aren't but the thing is is that you don't hear anybody talking about who is and who isn't i say the ones who are that walk around who are not materialistic who are naturally pretty girls they don't put all that shit on ain't got all that shit in their nose or anything like that they're the plain janes those are the ones you should be shooting for especially those who are conservative even if they're black if they're not talking that white lesbian feminist ideology shit known as feminism if she got a daddy in the house that's a good not a, a strong but a good black man and if she got a james evans in the house that's always yelling she the only way she gonna respond to you is if you yell at her because that's the only way her daddy could get a response so you think you wind up with women that like to fight they grew up in abusive households so when they get angry they want to lay hands on you sometimes it's good if you at your chick's house to listen in on girl talk you listen to her mama giving her some stupid ass advice about manifesting and shit and you're like oh my god i'm dating a ditzy airhead bitch She talking about tarot cards and shit. Get the fuck out of here. Like, man, stop. This herbal tea shit is... Uh, okay, uh, you straight for the stroke. I'm downgrading the relationship to just strokes. You know, because, I mean, why would I give up ever ready for never ready? I'm with you till I'm done with you. Hell, I've done that a few times. There have been some relationships I've sabotaged and totally blanked out on because it's like, okay, this is going nowhere. But, you know, I like the sounds you make at 2 a.m. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. At any rate. No, I mean, <clears throat> we're in dire straits right now. You got to get your money up. You got to get your security up. There's no way in hell you should be living in a house that does not have some type of legal firearm in it. In this day and age, there's no way you should be living in wherever you live in right, right now where you don't have at least two weeks worth of food in the cupboard somewhere i'm serious you look at the state of where where we're heading right now the state that we're in am i talking crazy i guess so time will tell time will tell you already see the moves that they're making do it look like they're in your favor or does it look like they're working against you i mean you were literally ignored in the last election only stacy abrams said something about black male voters and it was uh, a women on cnbc using shame was it joy reed trying to use shaming tactics sign language yeah all of that that bullshit that tiffany henry the always I'm, I'm i'm a black woman in power 
oh, that's just racist, you know, pulling the race card and the single mother card. I mean, and then, you know, just whenever she don't get her way, it goes into a long ass fucking soliloquy about either her being a black woman or being a single black mother or some type of racism, you know, it, 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 or, you know, with it, they not doing their jobs. It's, it's always some type of fucking tantrum when she's told no. That's just, in all honesty, that's typical Keisha behavior today. Again, shout out to AC. That's typical behavior that you have to deal with. And a lot of men, they fall for that shit. That makes them kowtow and buckle and become uh, bitches. You saw that whole thing that Bonnie Willis did, you know, trying to call herself, trying to tell the prosecutor, no, you lie. This is it. And this is it. And all that ghetto shit that the judge had to check her for. And somehow black folks thought that, that, that she won. You had black men who thought that she had won something there. And I'm like, you dumbass. She gave the prosecution exactly what she, what they needed. They got her on tape perjuring herself. She perjured herself. But she a strong black woman that don't need no man unless, you know, he working up under her and she can somehow <laughs> pay him 600K, 500K more than the other two lawyers so they could go on vacations and shit together and somehow fake paying half of it back with cash that's, that's so far still unaccounted for. He didn't spend it, did put it in the bank. It's not in his house. So where's this cash back that, you know, of taxpayer money? They thought that her attitude was her winning. And I'm like, you know why you think that? Because you grew up and your mama treated you like that in the house. So when she, so she loud talked you, you bitched up like the hoe that you is. She read, she read. That's the same shit that got that dude killed by that 14 year old boy. This dude was clearly highly agitated before he punched her in her face, but she couldn't shut the fuck up. She kept running her mouth when she should have just shut up and left the scene. Fuck them goddamn chicken wings. This dude is acting crazy and aggressive. You see the family that he came from. They was just as bad as he was. They wasn't nothing but, but a bunch of ghetto aggressive niggas just like he was nothing but black women not another man in sight getting honorary and belligerent with the camera crew just like he was with her in that store Could you call him the knockout king? Yeah. Trust me. Motherfuckers see all this shit. They see how we interact with each other. TikTok is, is just YouTube, all these social media platforms. They got us right where they want us at each other's throats over the stupidest of things when it's a matter of survival right now self-preservation is key i mean you literally have women the reason i played that whole 4b thing whatever to show you that women are, are willing to eradicate their own their selves their own species instead of fucking with you because they've deemed you all to be horrible human beings even though do understand that the average woman will mess with 0.000001% of all the men around her within a one mile radius even if she fucked the whole block still won't add up to 1%
this is what they've educated us to believe in these crown countries that being countries that are under european rule in one way or another everybody else don't play that shit they don't do that feminism garbage they don't do that that self-eradicating garbage this thing happening in south korea it is 100 an economic problem and i can see that the women are like well why won't you guys make no make more money just like they say to us here except they don't have feminism in the way it's an economic thing it has nothing to do with feminism feminists want to claim it but they were just fine up until COVID. countries raise their fucking interest interest rates to try to earn back the money that they spent when people are on lockdown all the benefits that they paid out so now their interest rate interest rates have soared technology has expanded within ever since 2017 people are losing their jobs Don't you think your biggest priority should be your finances other than your fucking? life is tough man get a helmet I, this young generation this younger generation those of you under the age of 35 i feel so fucking sorry for you especially those under the age of 30. high schoolers now there's no telling what this place is going to look like in the next five years looming war impending debt social disorder just just destroy it's nuked the economy shot the shit Go ahead. Tell me how you plan on getting out of this. I'm open to ideas. I'm open to suggestions. I really am. As long as they make some type of sense. Again, arguing with this chick on Charles's podcast earlier. Single mother of four in a one bedroom apartment. Don't know what the hell she going to do next at her wits end thinking that the government is going to pay her bills forever don't listen to the men listen to the woman that's telling you to manifest uh some type of way out of the situation don't know how don't have any solid answers but somehow you can manifest it by just thinking it and it'll just happen that philosophy works out great don't it fellas hmm? you've been manifesting trying to manifest hitting the lotto with your little three dollar scratch off and you know your daily three number play and everything you might win two hundred dollars there you probably gonna spend three hundred to hit that two hundred but you came up you finally smashed your work wife you done came up nothing wrong with a little pleasure but please wrap it up you ain't the only one Last thing you need to do is to be anchored to something like that for 18 years. 
financially anyway lord help you if you don't find out to three to five years later that back support when you get that letter that back support <laughs> you losing license and possibly job probably with a bitter bitch who hates your fucking guts and wish she never met you she hates the baby but she gonna use that baby for housing and, and food and partying <laughs> you are not the father oh my god look at drea michelle she has no skills no other source of income except to have another nigga's baby she got some some silly dude she she followed the britney renner playbook at least britney renner was in her 20s this chick is in her 40s with a history of child abuse on her docket y'all forget that when her son was seven she left him in an apartment by himself the dude was eating garbage it would look like a a, a a a well yeah a rat's nest yeah while calling that baby little nigga yeah now she about to pop out another one that's another 18 years of child support off an nba basketball player's salary who he better have a good career i mean damn the i mean the child support hustle is for broke bitches niggas still fall for it though like britney said these athletes they don't like to wrap up Woo! they don't give a damn about stds or nothing be on some game of thrones shit. i'll never forget the one girl she came out she just gave this guy here to completion came out of the room I forget the pimp's name, but he wiped her chin off with a with a rag and ushered her to the next guy in one fell motion, and she French kissed this dude and then went behind the curtain. That's pretty much what you're doing with as an athlete with these Instagram prostitutes, these social media whores. <laughs> Say the baby is an 18-year maturity bond. Imagine not being of that caliber and you're anchored to a chick who you know she's trying to get 450 dollars a month in child support when rent on average is anywhere between 15 to two thousand dollars a month and you need all your fucking money you got car note insurance food clothes you know what i'm saying gas get to and from work you just trying to live your fucking life you know knocked up some a, a, a chick from Family Dollar. It's even worse if you got a good job because now you know she's going to drain you in order to get herself out of the projects. Maybe. You are her ticket out of her mama's house. Maybe. Now is so not the time to be be reckless. It's really not. You really do need to hunker down financially, sexually, you know, emotionally. <laughs> Shit is crazy out here. It ain't like it used to be. What's up, Mosh? <laughs> you want to come back in? here or anybody y'all can come up i don't care i mean we just shooting the shit uh oh god damn it hold on <laughs> i might have trouble with my internets there we go we're just shooting the shit it's the day after easter i can't sum up the things that I see us going through, I can't sum it up in a two-hour podcast, a three-hour podcast. I'll try. 
<laughs> I may seem like I'm all over the place, but I understand we have so many fucking issues. It's ridiculous. The last thing we really should be worried about is women. You got to cut your dick off, metaphorically speaking. Get your weight up. Get your weight up. I asked PGS this last year. I'm like, hey, once we're done talking about the ills of women, what, what's next? I'm not saying that to try to cause any division or anything. I'm just saying I asked the question. And this is what's next. Black men getting their shit together. Something that Kevin Samuels was talking about before Average at Best called and interrupted his show. Remember, he was a, a black male uh, image consultant before she called his show, interrupting his show. Nobody ever plays those clips before that moment. I wonder why. Oh my God. You know what? You say that the government still give out the big blocks of cheese. Remember that? Yeah, the Reagan cheese. I remember them blocks of cheese, man. Them cheese weigh some good cheese sandwiches. <laughs> uh, them try them cheddar. I guess it was cheddar cheese. Man, my aunt had a restaurant. She used to shred that cheese, put it on them Polish boys, and then her macaroni and cheese and whatnot. Man, please. Them folks ate that shit up. <laughs> they ate that shit up. That was some good cheese. <laughs> Sign your name on the paper. They give you a goddamn log. <laughs> door jam of cheese. Industrial door, door jam. <laughs> Uh, some of y'all ain't old enough to remember that. Yeah, Ronald Reagan gave out cheese to black folks. <laughs> Thanks for the vote, niggas. <laughs> uh, yeah, those were the good old days, to be honest. I mean, back then, you could make some money. You know, uh, crime was crime but you know at least you could i mean i hate to say it but you could get away with it back then with street crime you get away with it back then and the gangsters actually had respect if they saw your mama you wasn't in the life they saw your mama struggling hey man go help miss johnson with her groceries you know what i'm saying get an underling to help her can they see her struggling and stuff because they knew they protected the they protected the women of the community to a degree even though they were also the destroyers of it because back then there was no stigma you know there was still a, a a manly presence floating around uh black neighborhoods when they used to be black neighborhoods there was a sense of community that street shit happened between street dudes there was a code there is no code now it's every man for himself. Chicks just running wild. I mean, it's crazy out here. It's wild, wild west. There is no unity amongst us. Everything is divisive. If we're not arguing, what are we doing? We're ignoring each other. tell me i'm lying you have your click you know i mean you talk about tribalism we all have our cliques this is who i hang with this is who you hang with this is who they hang with etc we may intermingle cross paths every now and then but once we go our separate separate ways we're we're with our cliques we're very tribalistic that's why we, we can't come together inform anything the government siphoned out they siphoned out the black dollar with integration which is really just integrating your money and the black men who can actually do something to fix these neighborhoods and communities and whatnot please 
they've given up Deion sanders is a prime example he's what the latest example he went to jackson state tried to turn it into something tried to turn it into a powerhouse and these niggas could just couldn't resist stealing from their own team in the locker rooms and threatening his sons with with death killing they actually found a dead player on campus in the bushes you got the, the damn president stealing the fucking ticket money Dion paying this dude out of his own pocket i mean he gave him a state of art. look improving for a college to succeed you in today's era which has been going on since what i guess the 70s 80s whatever top sport that they play which is normally football because there are no 85,000 seat stadiums uh being filled up to watch a college uh baseball team the basketball teams the stadiums are too small you can forget it maybe if you're in Kentucky or Indiana you can make some money but your football is king so he gave them state-of-the-art locker rooms, uh, jerseys, all that stuff. Got Michael Strahan donating suits and shit, new fields, everything. Started getting TV, national TV coverage at Jackson State. But you can't keep your hands out the fucking cookie jar. You can't stop being thieving niggas long enough to appreciate and be thankful to what dude is doing for you. So he got the fuck up out of there. and took the best players with them. What have they been doing since? Look at uh, Bethune-Cookman when they hired uh, uh, Reed. They didn't even have the good goddamn sense to clean out the offices that he was going to use. They left the old coach's moldy, musty, dusty clothes in his old office. Didn't even have enough good goddamn sense to make sure that the offices were clean. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? They found a dead player in the bushes. He got shot. You say you can't get over how he had to mow the field plus by a tractor to do it. Yeah. It was doing it, what, once a week? Yeah, we live in the we're living tribal in the post-tribal society sometimes it seems like the white supremacists are right about our iq they're the ones who trained us <laughs> they're the ones that educated us of course they know they they have think tanks best and brightest who sit up there and shape society best and brightest Why do you think they educate us to read, write, and count at an eighth grade level? Permanent underclass. In the Philippines, they got you learning four different languages in, in fucking grade school. Before you graduate high school, you know four different languages outside of your own. French, uh, English, German, and... Um, What's the other one? French, English, German. Um, fuck, I can't think of the fourth one. Because of all of the tourism, the expats and everything that come here. Oh, um, that's right, Japanese. Excuse me, Japanese. Yeah, they learn those four languages before they turn 18 years old. Why do you think... They hire people like if women want to move overseas and get a job, the easiest job they can get is uh, teaching English or whatever country they come from, teaching it to the kids. It's the easiest job they can get in a public school overseas. Amazing, isn't it? Pays them enough so they can have a decent living. Just teaching English. Just know our language too, though, but teach English to our to our children before they graduate high school 
and we'll pay you nicely for that. saying real life outside of YouTube. I barely know any brothers who read anything besides KG Bay Bible or social media comments. Yo, Lewis, when y'all see Lewis on my panels, especially those in the Patreon, y'all see him in my panels, you see he has the fake backdrop. But I, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but behind that backdrop, that dude got books on top of books. Books on top of books. Y'all see him sometimes in the, whenever we do a show together, or he holding up a book to the panel. Holding up a book to the panel. Holding up a book to the panel within arm's reach. You got some brothers out here that are voracious readers. John Henry Clark went, Clark went blind from reading. He read his eyes out. You say you always try to judge a person by his library. Well, I mean, as a man thinketh, so shall he is. Flat out. Whatever he finds is entertainment that he constantly bombards himself with. That's where his mind is. Shit. I know I sit up here I watch these shows and I dissect them I be dissecting the shit out. that's why I got the Patreon the paid member section we be dissecting the shit out of these shows or at least to try to uh, yeah I see what you did there I see the messaging I see the metaphors oh okay you trying to be slick with this that and the other because it's called programming for a reason. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get all conscious talk on y'all, but this, it is what it is. It's a new era now. You gotta get, you gotta get your shit together. You gotta get your money together. You gotta get your health together. You definitely back when he was doing all that red pill stuff i always talk about hey look you gotta get your shit together first before you call yourself stop talking to any chick that's worth a shit read read so that way you can have something to discuss yeah i'm reading this book or you know even if you don't say that you just discuss theories with her you see how, how smart she really is if she has any type of depth to her You'd be surprised that the women that are worth a damn are very impressed by a man's intelligence, not some just some goofy book smart shit that he knows for a job, but like literal like life stuff. Sit down and talk to her for hours, just educate her. Women love that shit. That worth a damn. Doesn't even matter what race she is. Your job as a man is to lead. How can you leave when you don't know shit? You can't talk about nothing outside of some fucking, you know, goofy ass TV shows as far as on a, a, a surface dirt level. You have no in-depth knowledge whatsoever of anything outside of what some fucking rapper or basketball player is doing. Or a football player. A co-worker, a brother, released a book recently, and 17 of us bought it day one. But I'm the only brother who actually read it. The other six brothers who bought it never opened it. Yeah, I mean, they supported them, but, you know, I mean, unfortunately, there's the male book club. <laughs> that's some real hush-hush shit, but that's messed up. You're probably the only person that could actually go to him and be like, hey, so when you wrote this, 
on this page what did you mean by that and then he can go ahead and explain it to you and i guarantee you if you've ever done that with him i bet his eyes lit up and he couldn't wait to break it down to you like oh man you the first person to ask me that yeah because i'm the only one that read your fucking book bro <laughs> You know, and he'll be happy to discuss it. And believe it or not, that's how men form bonds and exchange of ideas. You know, I mean, as much as Charles Xavier and Magneto go at it, they have the same type of ideological uh, 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 stance on things, but how they approach it are extremely different. Their solution is very different. You know, that's where they differ, but they're still friends, though. I appreciate that. Yeah, they're still friends, though. <sighs> yeah, because men are able to compartmentalize stuff. <sighs> they try not to let petty squabbles get in the way, but that's men. Not males. That takes that that's that's a man thing, not a male thing, a man thing. All right, y'all. We 310. And the water is getting to me. <laughs> uh, let's get out of here. Y'all be safe. Y'all know where I stand with everything. Take care of yourselves, man. Because nobody else is going to do it for you. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. And now they're beating us economically. They are not our friend, believe me. And these are the best and the finest. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It only makes common sense. They're sending us not the right people. It's coming from more than Mexico. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably, probably from the Middle East.